What's up, Pack? Steve Del Savio here with the Ask the Pack Leader Show. I just did look to the left to see what it was called again. Because <laughs> you forgot. <laughs> yeah, I was using the Pack Leader Experience. And we're doing that coming up. I'm here with Jamie and Adam. We're doing Hi another guys. episode. Hi guys. Episode number 21. Yeah, he oh, got it. Was it. 20. Yeah, Good job. I just remember that because nice. Jackie Jamie was, was actually off today. 21. I'm behind. Um, Jamie was off today. That's funny. I wanted to start off with a quote that I saw. So I've been uh, like... I think it's important for people to always be learning at all times. Mm-hmm. I'm just starting right off the bat. Now we're not even bullshitting. We're right to the beginning. I like it. I think it's important that you learn something new every day because it keeps the um, the mind thinking on and being able to believe new things and create new strategies and do new stuff. So if I didn't even know about like dog psychology, how am I going to be like, I'm going to be like a great dog psychology person or an expert, whatever you fucking call it. If I didn't know about business, how am I going to be good at business? If mm-hmm. I don't know about relationships, how am I going to be good at business? So you learn about it and then you apply it. That's kind of like what it is. Um, but then I was like reading and, and I love this is one that I'm sure you've all heard. It's you get basically you get what you tolerate. Mm-hmm. Oh, you used that one yesterday. Yes. And so they talk about that in business a lot. Right. So if I tolerate people showing up late, underperforming, um, being disrespectful, not being a good part of the pack, all that shit, then and I tolerate it, then that's what's expected. And they mm-hmm. believe that's what's going to that's what you're going to fucking get out of it. Right. But that comes to also I, I was I was talking about in relationships, even with uh, like a spouse or a girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever it is, is if you tolerate, uh, I'm not going to answer you. Um, where are you going? I'm not going to all that shit. And, and I'm not, you know, I just don't show up when we were supposed to go on a date or, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I tolerate lying or whatever. Then be expected to fucking get that shit. That's right. what's going to happen. So if you're tolerating, it's all aspects. So then it gets the dogs. It's the same thing. Of course. As always, How it, could it comes not? down to dogs because of the fuck. The, the, it, it, there's so many analogies that are in dogs when it comes to humans and business and all these things. But it, the leader will, will – well, they wouldn't be the leader. But if they're acting as leader in the home and you're tolerating your dog jumping on you, you're tolerating your dog going crazy at the front door, yanking you out the front door um, – Barking, I guess, eating the food fat. If you tolerate that shit, that's what you're going to get. And then the, then the humans get surprised and they say, I don't know why the dog is like this. Well, because that's what you tolerated and that's what you allowed to happen. So if you allow him – because but this is the big thing that happens is humans just don't realize the, the difference of what's happening. So they see – like the most common one, they're sitting there and the dog comes up to them and then jumps on them, right? So they, the, that's, that's the event that happened. That's the, the situation. The human says, oh, my God, look at my little puppy. He loves me so much. I'm so valuable because he just can't be a rat without me. So they fucking like that. They encourage that. Mm -hmm. And he just wants affection. He's so cute. And he's being a polite little boy asking for affection. Right. (laughs) The the dog is saying. That's the human version. That's the human version. The dog's version is, yo, lady, (laughs) I'm bored as fuck. (laughs) Give me affection now. Weak ass person. And the lady goes, okay, <laughs> and pets him. Or the guy, you know, it's either way. <laughs> Why does his voice sound like that? Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> I bet you. I just my voice. Yeah. That's my, that's my, that's my like, uh, ignorant dog owner voice. Yeah. Almost sounds like an old lady. Right. I'll just go right. pet. Yeah, it sounds like an old lady voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then they pet him, so like that. old evil lady. Yeah, <laughs> so that's, a, yeah, exactly. So that's like, but that's the, that's the <laughs> level of miscommunication that's happening in that moment so you have one you have one animal energy that's saying one thing the other animal energy is viewing an event happening one animal is viewing as this the other one's viewing as this. that's like the chihuahua video we saw yesterday uh oh, no, last week no, last week the last um the one we put on the podcast yeah the the, the human is seeing it as oh look at that cute little baby that's like on the street mm-hmm. and poor thing poor, poor little thing isn't that the Chihuahua scene is like, what is this weak ass energy coming towards me with all this excitement? If it comes mm-hmm. any closer, I'm warning you and I'm going to bite you. Get mm-hmm. out of my face. So two different energies, two different conversations happen with the same event. So we have to understand since we're a human being, and our intelligence level is going to be higher than a dog. We have to understand the way they see the world. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't be the other way around. And especially if we're going to be leading them, we have to understand the way, the way they see the world. So of that's course. why we did that shit. And that's the show. Yeah, and we're done. <laughs> So today you'll see, <clears throat> also, we'll do a transition. I'm wearing the, the good old TCW Training Caesars Way shirt. shirt. And I'm wearing the Pack Leader shirt. And you're wearing the Pack Leader shirt. Bullshit, by the way, <laughs> Pack Leader. <laughs> <laughs> so 
<laughs> no, but but I could leave. The I reason, leave. yeah, I wanted to post this, uh, put the shirt on today because um, I was talking with Caesar and Kim over there, and they're they're opened up the CCW now again. So we're going to be doing Open. boot camps. That's awesome. Yeah, we we scheduled a training Caesar's way for September, which I think is already sold out. But I think there might be one. It's also been sold out sold for out. two years. <laughs> that we yeah, haven't exactly. been doing. Them. And then there's going to be one in November, uh, I believe. And boot camps along the way. So check that out. Go on trainingcaesarsway.com, I think. Let me make sure I have that right before I get yelled at. <laughs> All right, Adam. They're not going to yell at me, by the way. Put it up here. <laughs> Training Caesars Way. Yeah, we can put it up there. We can put it in the uh, description as well. Or is it on? Maybe it's not Training Caesars Way. Oh, no. It's it's on actually caesarsway.com. Okay, so just go to, uh, to, tra to caesarsway.com, the regular site, and look mm -hmm. up um, courses. Let me see. Train with Caesar. Yeah, if you click in the menu, like the drop down thing, if you guys can see here, this the the three dots on a mobile. Can they see it? Yeah. If you click that thing, it comes down the top of Caesar. That's the uh, the courses and stuff. Train with team. I don't know what this is. This is all new, by the way. This is a new thing, so I'm just learning this on the fly. But regardless, if you guys are interested in working with us in that way, the owner Caesar Mal. <laughs> That's great. Um, if you guys are interested in doing, um, the workshops, uh, wait, is it, am I in this thing? <laughs> yeah, I just saw the things. <laughs> Steve. Yeah. He's not on right the there. scene anymore. Of course. See that shit? Barely. There's That's an old barely. picture. People are like, oh, I want to go see Caesar. And then it's like, oh. Steve. This guy? Yeah. All right, fuck that Him course, too, yeah. actually. <laughs> Damn it. But yeah, we're there. And, and it's me, Todd, yo, a bunch of people there doing the, the workshop. So it's not just Caesar. It's a bunch of the trainers there. That's the workshop where I started. I learned, um. Well, I didn't really start there, but that's a place where I like like went in like super speed to learn, mm -hmm. like learning experience there and just like catapulted to, to learning a lot. And it wasn't so much that like because to me, you need the experience one way or another, like a, like a decade, I think, to, of working with dogs, like to a degree every day to be really considered an expert. <clears throat> so I had uh, at that time, I only had like four years or three years doing it um, back in 2013. Yeah, four years. It was 2009 I started technically. Yeah, so I only had like four years in, but then that would really um, – Boosted you. It's an amazing thing because because people think they go to that course uh, thinking that it's going to be – like I'm going to learn all about the dogs, which you do. You learn a ton about dogs, dog psychology, energy, all that. But what most people learn about the most is, them, is themselves mm -hmm. by far. And that's what I learned the most about myself. <laughs> it was like I'm going there to see what do I need to do better with Maddie – and what are some dog tricks that this guy is going to teach me so I can be better with dogs? Actually, a lot of people don't know. We do meditation and all that oh, yeah, there, yeah. too. So you learn definitely a lot about yeah, yourself. Yeah. So and it's a lot of human psychology things, yeah. too, of learning all that and how we feel and how we're reacting to and how to visualize and intention and all that shit. So I thought I was going there for that, but then realized, wow, I got to work on my own insecurities. I got to work on my anxiety. I got to not on my on the. I got to work on insecurity. <laughs> I got to work on anxiety. Yes, um, I got to work on my impatience on things, my frustration and and like temper about dumb shit. You know, and that's what I realized about there, and that's what I've been working on honestly since then. Mm -hmm. You know, always getting a little bit better every single day. You know, but people, I think sometimes people are going to go there. This is again, but like you went there in 2013. Or you went, oh, okay. So they think that, that, that like things are going to happen really fast. And, and this is what it comes down to. I, I watched another really good video by a guy. I, I don't even know what he was, but he's one of the tech guys who, um, he was either a Google or Facebook guy, one or the other. And he's talking about, um, business and shit. Right. And he's saying like the businesses people want. All right. So we live in this era with this phone. Right. So we're, we're, we're expecting in, we have one brain, right? This, we go on here and we condition and practice our brain to go next post, next post comment. They liked, they, this, they, this. So result, result, mm -hmm. result, result, right? Like Amazon, I ordered. Okay. It's here today. Great. What's the next thing? Da, da, da. So we're teaching our brain and conditioning our brain to be like that. That mindset is not very good for business because it's, it, that causes us to be, and I find myself getting into that. That's what I'm fighting. And I was actually talking to Adam about this yesterday. It's like, I'm like a weird generation, or at least my age of graduating in 2000 in high school. Cause I got my first cell phone at 17. It was my graduation. It literally was my graduation gift, but it was like a, fuck, what was it? An LG phone or something that like, like that flipped, like flip. I just flipped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just had phones. So yeah. like, I don't even think you texted on it. I don't Maybe no, you did. No, text wasn't around then. I think it was just like a phone. So I didn't even get to. What, what year was it? 2000. Yeah. So I don't know when the iPhone came out. One. I'm, I'm gonna trying guess, to think like, when 06. I got mine. When did the I iPhone? know my first cell phone. You my shared it, right? I shared it. Yeah, you said that. talked about this. When did the iPhone come out? 
What I, year? I'm not sure. It might maybe 2004. Why don't you ask Siri? Uh, well, iPhone come out. <laughs> Siri would definitely know that answer. <laughs> I want to say 2004. That's my guess. What about oh, you? Oh, I have no idea. No idea. Oh, the first general iPhone was announced by uh, in 2007. Oh wow! No. So what? That's the thing, right? So then, add seven years on. I was like basically 25 when even any of these apps and all this shit started. Right. Right. So I'm like in the middle of this thing now. For the last 13 years, I've been conditioned to start speeding my fucking brain up. But luckily for me, I have 25 years prior to that right. of trying to be a little slower of, of just not being a uh, app. Amazon, like Facebook. You're Google. still for, you're still from the New York area though, so you're well, still that's speedy. That's is that? But yeah. that's that's also against me as I came. Not not so, well against me in this aspect of of like speed thing, from the New York area without right. a doubt. That's and like my parent, my my father particularly. If you're watching, he's another one who's on fire. And shit, so <laughs> that's like all these things um, add up to. But it's one where like a lot of these people are talking about. Even the guys who are creators of these apps and stuff, they're like, we don't go on that shit. Like I'm not going. We don't let our kids go on it either. Because right. it's literally we create it, but we don't. It's use literally it. yeah, yeah. It's supercomputers that are designed to keep you like like in, in like grabbed into that. Yeah. That I don't even know what you even call it. That, that app, I guess. Right. You know what it reminds me of? I don't like know if you guys will remember like. this. But remember the screensavers that like the little dot would like bounce everywhere. Yeah. yeah. I'm like really dating myself yeah. here, but that's like <laughs> kind of like reminds me of what our what? brains doing, just uh, like yeah. bouncing oh, all over yeah. the place. That's a good one. And that's why, like, even for me, I'm, like, really making sure that I'm, I'm, like, way less scrolling. And if I'm going to, like, look up something, I'm looking up, like, a YouTube video that I'm going to watch for at least 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Like, watch that video. And if my and, and these are little practices that I do of, like, because as you guys know, my phone's going off nonstop. So then all of a sudden I hear, bing, bing, and I turn that to mute. And I don't answer that shit until I'm done. So I make these little, like... Li these little agreements. Well, then you turn off your notifications too. What? For a yeah, lot I have no more notifications except for phone and text. Yeah. Which is like, but it's still silent too. Sometimes, so sometimes I think you turn those off too. I just, t I just, I just realized that it's on vibrate for texting you back. No, he's just me. He just yeah. blocks. Yeah, me. yeah, he blocks you. <laughs> but people say, "Oh, you're really terrible with the phone," and I'm like, "I don't know. Define terrible with the phone." Right. Because Wait, when I text, because that one that he's holding up right now that's the one that he answers the most <laughs> yeah, exactly. well when so i can't get a hold of my text both. One. yeah, <laughs> yeah so at I'm the same like, time yeah so it's one of those things that it's just for me like I, I i have these little practices that happen throughout and it's the same thing that happens with dogs it's people think it's like what's the thing that i need to do to overcome this and they think it's one thing it's how, how do i get my dog to stop reacting mm -hmm. oh just like use that tool and you're done no it's all the reps. It's all learning, trying different tools, doing different things, changing your energy. It's just the little pieces of, of things. So that's a little piece for me of making myself not like, 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 um, um, reacting to the world as opposed to having the world react to me. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So it's like, bing, 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 bing. The world's like, yo, we need you now. It's like, yeah, not right now. I'm learning something now. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but I, I heard that you should not make yourself as a uh, accessible. Yeah, to just anybody, any energy, you know. Well, that's what I'm saying. They say that like I get that, <laughs> yeah. I get shit all the time. I, I just laugh at that because I'm like, yeah, right. Like, how yeah. could I not not be accessible? Yeah, you know well, what I mean. Like, yeah, easy, but, easy. But. You don't have a social media. That's how you don't do it. No. You're not but accessible. You know what I mean for business and stuff. Like if Steve right. calls no, and yeah. texting me, I can't just be like, oh, sorry, Steve. I just like wasn't. Yeah. In well, the mood for him, he's your phone. boss. <laughs> but but anybody right. else, you just can right. block people out. Yeah. Right. But then it's hard to like you know when I get a text or a phone call, like I'm always looking to see who it is because I don't know. Right. How right. Right. Makes sense. That makes sense. Maybe make a different ringtone for Steve or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that, anyway, that's dun, what um, dun, 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 like all yeah, freaking exactly. <laughs> That's what I so that's what I do. I just little practices every day. I tell people like, do you, I you know one of the clients yesterday, she was work. She wants to work on recall. So I said for five minutes every day, get food like little treats. Go to the nose, walk away as the dog's coming. Say the name and come. Give food, walk away. Do it again. Do that for five minutes. That's it. I'm all I'm asking you five minutes a day. Those five minutes compound big time. So yeah. that the five minutes of doing. Learning something new, the five minutes of meditating daily, the mm -hmm. five minutes of Working doing out. breath work, five minutes of, um, you know what, I, I'm not going to work. I'm just going to go jog up the driveway and back. You startized. Yeah, it was not that much, but you did. It's better than zero. Right. And then the next day you would go for six minutes or maybe like you do a week of six minutes, then seven minutes, whatever it is for the individual, as long as you're growing. Because remember, progress is the whole fucking game. Okay. Next. What are we doing? <laughs> Am I doing this? So today. Okay. So. I know because we, we're, we're getting more organized now, which Yay. is awesome. Did you guys notice? 
we'll, we'll see. Well, let's let's see. Yeah. Okay. You can take yeah, a poll at the end. <laughs> don't speak too soon, bro. So I we're actually. There. So the video, this first video, is it the first video that we're gonna show? The dog yeah, park. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this dog park video, I can't remember if I sent it to Caesar or we just had it there or someone else that I don't know what it was. Let's just take credit for it. Okay. I'll take you credit did it for it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but this was a video that I thought was fantastic. Um, I had seen this a long time ago, but we do play it at uh, CCW to show people about just dogs and their communication and stuff. I think actually the better way to do this. How long is the video? Is it really Ooh, long? I'm forgetting. I think. Oh no, it's like three, four minutes. Did I assess this? No, no, no. no. I'm thinking of the, of the golden retriever with the puppies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. I think a better way to do this one is we let it just play mm-hmm. one time through. Let's see if Steve can help himself, Jamie. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think, <laughs> Jamie? What do you think? I would put my we'll, money on it. And we'll too. restart it, and we'll restart it, and <laughs> oh we'll, we'll like assess it step by step. Okay. Let's All right, do that. Cool. So, oh, am I doing I, that, or are you gonna do that? We, ha- I have, I have faith in you, Stephen, but um, okay. very, very little. I have faith in you. I have faith in you, but I'm just gonna do it myself. <laughs> very little. Yeah. Very little faith. I have faith, but I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I have faith, but I'll do it. Okay. So this is obviously why we wanted to show it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Wrong one. Yeah. Can on your iPad? Can you, you mind just tapping that? Um, Tap image? this. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> to give the um, introduction. The video of a dog park somewhere in Europe. I'm not even sure what this is all about, but it seems to me like a scenario like they wanted to. It does seem like a scenario that they wanted to work with this husky, Mm -hmm. but we'll just let it play out. There's a bunch of dogs here. There's a ton of communication that's going on in here. I'm going to let it play out and we'll see um, what you guys think of it first. And then we'll see what I thought of it and see where how we all match up. I just got tapped. Okay, let's go back. So much for being organized. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) There you go. I got you. There you go. Okay. Three minutes. Yeah, this is why we wanted to show it right here. <laughs> I'll just be quiet though. I'll just let this happen. <laughs> just so you guys know, the focus is on the husky. That's what that's what we're focused on. That's the uh, prime suspect. 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 Whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of things happening here. This is a dog park. Yeah, it looks like I don't know if it's a park or a field or what the hell they're doing, but it's just a dog. A dog meetup. They just met up real quick, hang out. A doggy social. Doggy yeah. social. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I know. He caught really himself. <laughs> but this is the thing: is like a why I want to show these videos for everybody. Because most people are going to be watching this, and I would have in the past too. It's just because I've seen this and watched this shit so often. Like, not this particularly, but seen this stuff, right? That there's certain things, and I'm like, whoa, glaring issue, glaring issue, yeah. glaring issue, and no one's doing anything about it. Like, you want to hit, like, the red <laughs> <alert> button. <laughs> I wanted to make sure it's either so I texted him. I was like, "Nice." I want to um, show, like the describe or do a play by play on that German Shepherd video. Is that okay? He's like, "Yep." <coughs> That's cool. It's awesome when he does it in um, TCW. Yeah, and it's I love it because like when we do it there, we start asking the students like, "What are you seeing?" Right, 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 right. Like, which one did you saw? And everybody's pretty new at everything, so they're like, um, "Yeah, I don't know. Is that something?" <laughs> you know, and mean this is. And this is cruel and the poor little thing and da, da, da. all this emotion. It's a lot of emotional shit, but unfortunately, Mother Nature doesn't give a fuck about your feelings. <laughs> Sorry. I think we need to make that into like a meme. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, I mean, really, Mother Nature does not give a fuck about your feelings. About your That's emotions great. and shit. It's so true. I mean, <clears throat> it does. Like Mother Nature does because it wants you to be calm. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And all that. But... It doesn't care, I should say, about like, well, I don't like the way this, blah, blah, blah. Well, this is the way we do things. As this thing is playing right here, Steve, it's interesting how long that part takes, right? Yeah. After, this is even after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it goes there. Mm-hmm. I can't believe we're actually doing this finally. This is great. I know. We were talking about doing this video for a while. A really good video. Really good. Now your explanation. There's so much shit going on, but there's for to the naked eye, a fight happened <laughs> in right. the dog park. You know. Yeah. 
All right, so let's assess this bad. Sorry, right, so to tell you guys what happened to, to, to overall what happened here, the the brief summary of this is you have a excited husky being this just humping the shit out of this dog who it's either excitement we don't know if there's if the dog's been neutered if not we right. don't know what this whole thing is about but it seems like an excitement thing and he's targeting like this lab for whatever reason <clears throat> the lab is also a little bit of a weaker energy it feels like too so you have that going on and then you have it seems like to me the german shepherds in there the two both of them are are stronger energies and it seems to me like they were like setting this thing up because the humans didn't intervene i was gonna say no one even really and they reacted. were expecting something like this to happen and maybe this is like some sort of thing that they were doing there could be but it's a great video for behavior to see what happened and then what happened basically in the, in the larger more dominant um german shepherd there said attacking any of my pack members is not allowed and people are going to label what he did there as aggression it's not aggression it's pure dominance which mm -hmm. all it means in that moment is you need to stop what you're doing and go to all the way to a uh, surrender calm state calm surrender calm follower state because and understand that there's a consequence for this behavior right and then once you got it which is why it took so long once you got it we move on and you can you're you're more than welcome to continue with us under the new rule set that you understood now right no, right. Hard, kind of no hard feelings yeah. yeah yeah and you can see there was not the, the, the humans didn't even intervene and the dogs walked away right yeah so and, it did, and it did take a little a little bit of time there um yeah. for him to calm down because he was up so there i'm on this shit here are you excited to use this okay so look i'm here i can point at things i'm excited right. for him and to play is what again okay Nice. Okay. Nice, Steve. Okay, so obviously, okay. we start with <laughs> okay. this whole shit. Right? You got that, okay? Excited dog uh, humping. So even there, like, hold on, look at, look at, like, this is gonna. That's take a the shepherd. This is gonna take a little while, by the way, for me. <laughs> if you press but play and then rewind, it'll be faster. Oh, look you at guys this guy. Have a lot of like, time. Like, like, so what's this guy <laughs> up to? So this makes me question it too, because like, here comes this guy coming over. He sees that guy coming, and he right, stops. Right, 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 right. So he's like, oh, is he gonna do something? I, I, I had so never noticed. So just so you know. Him. Okay, here comes my friend, Mr. Shepherd, and this is number one warning right here. So he's looking there, and then watch the head turn, and then he sees, oh, look at this shit. Look at that. Slows himself down. Look at the tail up, the ears up, facing the dog. That's a, I'm seeing what's happening here, and I don't like, that turn back is another one. Mm -hmm. Right there, he's assessing and evaluating this whole situation. This is a big thing right there. It's a big one. Look at the way he comes around the corner of this guy. A lot of energy this dude is sending here. The, this, so I'm here. No, no, it won't. I don't remember. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this guy. There's a lot of conversation happening here. And my friend over here is oblivious yeah. to what's going on here. Right? But look at, the, look at this eye contact right here. Like, whoop, right at you. Why, keep mm -hmm. your shit, you know. Okay. Keep this going. So he's standing there assessing and evaluating now. Husky goes on and says, fuck off, I'm going to do my thing. They gave space, but the shepherd's still paying attention, right? So here comes the second shepherd, the shorter-haired one. And he seems pretty confident of a guy, too. So he's here, and then that's happening. Right, okay, right there is another one. Look at the tail, right? So he's looking that way, and as this guy comes, look at this. Mm. Right? <laughs> oh, my God. So that is, like, to me, I'm like, oh, my God. God, it's like so obvious <laughs> yeah. to me. Like, like, but this guy got it to a degree and gave space. That's what I'm saying. Like, look at where the husky goes. Look at his direction. All right. So we'll start it right here. Yeah, because that's oh, the lab. Oh, let me give some space to my friend over there and go back around him. So he does feel the energy. Right. Right. He just doesn't. He's just ignoring he's not it a really, little bit. Yeah, he's giving some respect in space, but he's more of like, you know, it's like when I go and address a dog firmly, or if I address one of these guys, and they're like. A little bit, yeah. Like, I get what you're doing, but like I can feel all this, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to surrender. Yeah. I'll just give space, or I'll just right. go away, or whatever. Right? So that's a big one. So that. Turn. <laughs> so now this this shepherd over here. This guy. He's now joining in and noticing there's some issue happening over here with these two. And he he wasn't really a part of any of this up until now. No. Right. Can you go he back a been. few seconds? Yeah. Because I was watching the other guy. Yeah. The bigger... Uh, when he gave space? German Shepherd? Yeah. No, when this guy, like, kind of started to join in. Which is right about here. So here he gives space. 
to this guy. The oh, the bigger shepherd then this likes that. Bit. This guy comes in. And he, he just, just comes into the picture. That's a little bit of yeah. a conversation mm -hmm. right there. there. Some tension with yeah. that guy. It's almost like the husky gave space, but then he came back to like look at the bigger the bigger German shepherd. You know, say what that I mean? again. Like um, the husky gave space, but then he came back to kind of see like, well, what's your deal? You know, I don't know if you noticed that. Uh, go back a little bit, you'll see. When the other German shepherd noticed, so he had already given space right here in this moment. He had given that space, but then look how he circles back around to look at him right there, right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he's, well, he noticed him coming for sure. Um, no, the bigger German shepherd he's looking at. The husky is looking at the right. So he noticed the other shepherd coming. Yes. Yeah, he's looking at that guy. But he's also like looking at the bigger German shepherd and seeing like, well, what are you looking at? I, feel, I think he's looking at the lab here. Oh, and he's then still sees that guy coming <laughs> and sees that guy. And says, ah, right. Go over here. I'm going to go back to my humping thing. But look, the, right. the, 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 the shepherd here is trying to, to create some distance, like create a boundary around mm -hmm. the lab, like give space. Like, come on, give some space. This obsession thing. Like, so he right. like kind of like. That's a whole thing, that little pale thing that he went through and went by in, in front of him. That's right. a whole thing. And then the other shepherd's coming I this didn't way. see him. Yeah, I got to look at him again. Now you can see what we're, what, like, the, the, like, we're looking at here. Right. Okay, so now this shepherd comes. Look at the, let's look at the big guy now. Right. That's another warning right there. Mm -hmm. He's seeing what's going on here. That's another one. He's studying from a distance here. Look at the shepherd. This guy now, he's watching him here. Like these two shepherds are like when I go into the dog park and I have like an aggression case and we're working with them. The dog's in muzzle and long line and I have like the pack. Like that's that's me there and that's like, I don't know, Christian or Daniela mm. or Dave or Christina, whoever is over there. It's like my like the other one paying attention. So we're watching this husky, seeing when do when do we need to intervene? Everything's like we see here, right. but but nothing that's like of like a of of something we need to address totally just yet. Right. You know. Well, the humping and all that, yes, I would have. One hundred percent, I would have done that. But they obviously want to do something like this. So. So you're kind of like the bouncer. Yeah. At a club. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, Fulton. Huh? Like yeah. Fulton, our, our police. <laughs> Not so much the bouncer, but. Um, yeah, the, the bouncers, yeah, the, 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 that wasn't the best analogy. Um, <laughs> I'm learning. I, I know I'm not the best. <laughs> no, but it's kind of like that. <laughs> kind of like that. You're like you're what can and what can't go. Um, Steve just doesn't like bouncers, so, so don't, <laughs> don't say that again. I know, that was a, a trigger. A yeah, don't, <laughs> yeah, don't, yeah, don't, don't mention that. Bad anymore. analogy. But that, but you know why, though? But a lot of bouncers are not good, and they bring more yeah. excitement yeah. and yeah. tension yeah, to already. Like, so the bouncer's job should be to to de-escalate. Yes. But so many bouncers are like, don't take offense, bouncers, but some of them are like, I'm going to be a fucking bouncer, right. and no one's going to do shit in my place. And they bring, and they actually escalate situations. And I've been in many of them. Right. Where they come and escalate. But and the guys, general guys, purpose separate. of them is to be there and to, to regular. Don't, yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't, yeah. don't defend them, though, Jimmy. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Let's go. <laughs> so that's enormous one right there. Sorry. From the... Um, Assaulting the mic from again. From the shepherd Assaulting. here. Look at that shit. It's fucking... Look at how slow... I'm not doing slow motion on by the way. Like, he's just normally going kind of slow. So the way he curls around right here, look at this. The top, this, so the husky's coming with his, with his tail straight in the fucking air, looking around. Shepherd giving warning. I'm just gonna do a slow motion thing. So he walks, says, "All right, you look, come this way. I'm gonna come right into your space, bro. Watch out." Mm -hmm. So look at that. Look at yeah. all the, the quietness, the, the 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 big energy of him. Watch what you're doing, bro. That's what he's saying. He's like, "You need to come and fucking slow your roll in here, dude. Mm -hmm. You're too much, you know." And I'm not liking what I'm seeing. So then now this thing says, that was a huge warning from him. Okay, see. He's like blowing he all of it off. He's evaluating here. And he says, eh, you know what? I'm gonna, where's, where's my lab? So this shepherd is now circling and taking a, taking a, uh, a look at where things are. The lab is making that noise, by the way. Like, get off me. Look, so here comes mm. the shepherd. Hearing it happening again, but the other guy's like, you see him. He so didn't this like is the thing, really like, pay attention. Nah, because it was very minor. It's like, burr, burr, burr. <laughs> it's like nothing that he needs to like step in about. Right. They they should be able to sort that out on their own. The leader comes and steps in. I do it in the beginning because most of the dogs haven't been socialized that we work with. So we ha like the puppies and stuff. Yes, I let them do it. I let Nico do a lot on his own because he's been doing it his whole life. Mm -hmm. I let him. I guided him since puppyhood. But a lot of these dogs who come, they don't know how to socialize. So I'll, I won't, like, tolerate that that humping. I let them know right away or else they say, what else can I do? Right, they push and most it. of the dog parks, they allow this shit to go on and on and on. They get into 5 to 10 range out of 0 to 10. 
And then that's where all the fights are happening. Mm -hmm. The humping's happening. The competition's happening. That's my owner. That's my ball. That's my bowl. Like, you know, don't touch my rock fucking Mm -hmm. thing. Like, I'm going to hump you. It just gets crazy, like, in that place. So, yeah. So this guy – so now this other shepherd's coming in trying to break the scene up again. They're all – they've been sending messages to the Husky all day. He's just not surrendering. I mean, that's that's the bottom line to this whole thing. They've been sending tons of warnings like, bro, you need to calm down in this place. And he's saying – Fuck your park yeah. and your rules. <laughs> you know, and that's most of the dogs that come here. Right. Yeah. But they come from owners who – I'm sorry. They come – yeah, they come from the owners who have been, like, encouraging them to break rules mm-hmm. or teaching them bad rules. Right. Like, to, to go Unknowingly. against Mother Nature. Go against what you would normally have done if you lived in a, in a pack. Okay. So that's, like – so now, that, now this shepherd seems like he wants to come and, like, smell on the husky a little bit or come in a little bit. Look, so you see him come in. Look at and look at what the husky, this disrespectful husky. He's like, <laughs> he's like, you don't touch me. Nobody smells me. No one, don't come near me. I'm gonna correct you for it. That's what, that's so the husky here is not. So people say aggression. He's correcting. He's correcting. The, Give me space. I'm tr- trying to hump this slab over here. Don't tell me what to do. Right. But he's, like, he's doing it in a way like, like, like get away from me. Yeah. I'm this husky in the park. <laughs> like that's what you would be saying. The 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 shorter the shorter hair shepherd is like this fucking husky is like. Do we either do something about this? And the older yeah. shepherd back there is like, we'll see. Let's see what he does. Let's give him a chance here. If not, then we'll let him know. And then, you know, there's that whole thing. Oh. Yeah, see right there? Mm-hmm. That's a snap. <laughs> so look, I'm just... Look at how the husky, I mean, the... Interesting how the lab goes yeah, after the... Yeah, the... but there's dogs yeah. that do this. So dogs yeah. dogs will, will, without a doubt, there's dogs that join in. You get a pack attack, and mm-hmm. there's dogs that will go away. So, like, I had one where I was walking, like, ten dogs once. And two of them got into it, and, the, and I remember I used to deal with like the like the like the all the criminal dogs yeah. kind of thing, like all the the guys who just got out after thirty year armed robbery and shit. Like those are my <laughs> so I'm walking with those guys, and they would just you know. And break. I have bad analogies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It really is because those are the guys who've been in tons of fights. They've been and they've broken many fucking laws. They yeah. bit people. They he's bit just, other he's like uh, trying to fights. rationalize his uh, yeah. analogy there. No, but it is. I always tell people that's that, that it is a good analogy, by the way. <laughs> Because <laughs> what most people are dealing with is like like these trainers are dealing with, um, you know, like the toddlers who are just misbehaving a little bit the in the toddlers. house, or like the the teenager who's not coming home at time. Mm-hmm. Like those are the one excited dogs, pushy dogs, puppies, this stuff, like that kind of stuff. The the <clears throat> the ones that we deal with were the ones who have already I'm so, like committed some big fucking crimes. Like mm-hmm. they bit the fuck out of dogs. They've been in like huge dog fights. They bit people. They da da da. So bringing them back in yes this is the thing that people have to understand too is like the level of rehabilitation it's what it, depending on how much trauma and i consider that trauma like how out of balance a dog has been and how many traumatic events meaning if a dog was fearful and a human went towards them and ah! like there's it, it it brings it down a little bit of work comes more management not saying dogs can't be rehabilitated but depends on how much shit they've been through you know and then right. that requires how much to go they're really going to need a lot. Luckily, on the fr- on that end, they live in the moment, so it takes shorter. But it's also like a long game too. So meaning shorter to get them to a much better healthy state. Mm-hmm. But then it takes time to like get over a lot of right. positive experiences for the guys who have been through a lot of shit. It's like humans too. Yeah, the more shit you've been through. So look at look at look at look at while this is happening. There's you see like the huskies like trying to bite the shepherd, this and that. And this this lab is one that joins in the pack fights, you can see. But like more of uh, like when they're ah, that's why I'm always looking around like what's happening. And people focus on this, but then other dogs come in. You got to be careful of all that going on. Right. It's really important, the especially lab- with a pack. Like if you have oh, these two dogs are getting it. It's one of the most common things you'll hear me talk about my staff with. They go to address one dog and then they have dogs over here and they and they can forget mm-hmm. about these dogs. You can't forget about those dogs because while you're addressing this dog, this one's looping around and coming right into his face like this. Right. And you go, oh, wait, what? And now there's a fight here. Right. Yeah, yeah. So as the leader, you have to assess everything. So if I'm dealing with this one – like if I'm the leader of the company, I'm dealing with one employee. How does it affect the rest of the company? Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So you have to be in that the whole time. But look at the shepherd back there. <laughs> All right. Where am I going to make the, my move? The lab, the lab was like, uh, that's my man. Don't tell him what to do. <laughs> He's an employee. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Can you go back and like play it and stuff? Yeah. Yeah.
So that, those, that like curl like that when they start aiming, like a dog starts curling like that and starts looking at like the dog's like neck area, head area thing, that's mm-hmm. not a good sign. Like yeah. curling the body. Yeah, that's like, and a lot of dogs will, will like, they'll be, st- like if you, my, my fingertips are the head, they'll be smelling each other's rears. But if they start coming like this, watch out for that shit. I feel it like doesn't always I feel be. Like that's why I say like... that's body language. So you have to understand the energy. Action figure dogs. Yeah. yeah. Because people are going to see this. The problem is like, and like you'll go into a dog park now and be like, ooh, this is not going to be good. But it's really play. So right, it, right. It's, right. It's, it's a matter of the energy that's being projected in that moment too. That's the most important thing. Then the body language. Mm-hmm. And then you can assess and evaluate what's going to happen there. You having fun doing this, bro, or what? Yeah. Let's nap. Nice fucking – the, the the shepherd is like uh, just like yeah yeah Bob and Muhammad Ali uh, yeah like this right now. Hopefully, oh, that feels. He's using his body too to kind of like block yeah. him. Yeah. He's biting. He's like, like mm-hmm. So here comes the shepherd. Just moves right forward. Like Superman. Right the boom 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 boom. Yeah, he's like, I'm not dealing with this shit. Yeah, and goes on. And I assure you, if this husky starts resisting and stuff like that, he'll use the mouth for mm-hmm. sure yeah. to get him to stop. But he, he doesn't body. use the mouth at all. No, not no. really. Well, he, he wants this guy to – he wants this guy the, – the whole goal of what this shepherd is doing is to calm this dog the mm-hmm. fuck down. Mm-hmm. That's it. You're being disrespectful, and you need to calm down. Like, slow down, dude. You're, you're too much. We're, we're in here, and we're – you know, watching the game, just having some drinks. You think you're in the stadium right now, like mm-hmm. like on the field with the team. You're not. We're not doing that here. You know. And this is obviously goes on for a while. Here comes the lab barking and barking and barking. He he's just joined in into the excitement of what just happened. And wow, 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 they, okay. So look at how everybody respects the leader. What he's doing here. They all give space. And if you watch. What, look at down here, like um, by the paws and stuff. You'll start see him like moving a little bit, and what he's doing there is moving to see like what the reaction going to be yeah. to the dog. So if I start moving and touching you, does, does the dog snap up? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Because that's going to uh, in a tense state. And he's like, he, some people say, why is he just standing there? Well, he's taking his time. He's patient. There's no time limit on this. He's not waiting for how long do I have to wait? 10 seconds, 13 seconds. He's waiting to feel that the husky is relaxed, has calmed the fuck down. You can see the husky's breathing is pretty heavy. <coughs> but he's coming down. And you see the, see how the, the husky's legs are all the way down and all this? Yeah. The tail is relaxed also. Look, and he's going he's gonna to smell him. He's smelling him now. And making sure. Because, because listen, if he's going to do it, like do this act, he wants to make sure he follows through and then he completes it because he doesn't want to have to do it again. Right. That's the goal. You know, but then you have people who would watch Dog Whisperer, unfortunately, back in the day and see as you would do that to a husky who is like behaving way worse than that. Way, way, way worse. And he would do it in a very healthy way, put the dog down, let it settle. Look, he's smelling. That's a big, that big turn that he did right there is what he was doing the whole time. Right. 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 So he's teaching him. At the, that's, that's me when I get the dog to get so I'm telling you, this noise means this. When I do this shit, it means you do that. Mm. You lay there or stop what you're doing and be calm and respect what the fuck I'm telling you. That's all he's doing there in that moment. And he's doing it in a calm way. Right. And then you get the people. That was, I don't like that. <laughs> well, then don't work with dogs. <laughs> yeah. don't, go in nature. I don't know what to tell you. Stick, stick to the little human. But he didn't do anything harmful world. to the husky. No. He, they, right. they, not, not harmful. It, well, physically, you're talking about. Right. No, it wasn't harmful. And if anything, it was extremely beneficial for the husky. That's, right, there's nothing right. he's doing there to try to make this dog worse. He's trying to improve right. the situation. People see the big so look uh, at look at look at the husky, look at the husky's tail now. Look at this fucking tail. Remember, it was up up here mm-hmm. the whole time, and it's not down. It's not wrapped underneath the body. Terror, it's just relaxed down. Yeah. Right, and this is probably the owners or people he knows over here. Look, so watch the people, how good they do of a job here. They don't even coddle him. I'm not feeling sorry. Look, his tail goes up a little bit with them. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. then he comes back. Look at this guy. This is what I always say. Like, it's a good sign when they, like, come back and they study. Yeah. Mm. What just happened? (laughs) Yeah. This is, like, what happens a lot is I say, let them go through this now. Like, if Mm -hmm. something was to happen, if we had to do that with a dog and settle them all the way down, 
you have to leave them for a little bit and let them say, if they go right away back to it you didn't do it properly right, or right. it has to happen again but the other thing to point out here as we're talking about this is that people have to understand i don't can't even remember the last time i did that to a rock you didn't you know what I'm saying? like full on put him on the side no yeah. i can't remember the last time i did so i think people think that like oh now you i'm gonna go home time. and do that shit to my dog i'm not recommending that i, I don't re- recommend no. most people doing that most trainers doing that it, it's a very um serious thing that you do there that has a lot on the line and if you do it incorrectly because what matters there is the energy what is the past with that dog? Have you mm-hmm. have you been acting as follower and all of a sudden in this moment you're going to act as leader? He's going to try to pr- probably try to bite you. Um, are you feeling sorry for him? Are you have the proper technique to hold him there? There's a, lot There's of a million factors. things that are happening there. That's like some high level shit that you have to do. do. And that's where a lot of people, um, you know, Caesar couldn't have made it any more fucking clear at the beginning of the show. Do not attempt these yeah. techniques <laughs> without consulting a professional every show. And then you had people all over the world. Yeah, I put him on his side. I put him on his side. They don't know how to do it. Right. You know? But sometimes people can't help themselves, unfortunately. This is, to me, like professional work. But we'll see the end of this. So they did a really good job of um, happening here. Uh, of not doing it. And now you see the puppy. He's more like mingling. I mean, the husky. Smelling around. Just like, all right. Well, to your point, you don't have to that do happened. that. Look at the tail. Right in the middle. Relaxed. Feeling good. And then he's going to sit down there. All right. So what the fuck just that happened. That happened. <laughs> so now what? And everyone else, look at, this. Look at how the, the shepherd feels about it. Yeah. I don't care. As long as can you go back to when this like scuffle first broke out? Steve, to your point, you don't have to do all of that anymore um, because you you catch things before they escalate. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You're in more like prevention mode now. Yeah. You know, and I understand why you're trying to go back. Like I got you. <laughs> yeah. I got you right here. Can you stop for a sec, too? Yeah. I understand why people don't like that shit and people will say because like you'll see people who are who are promoting an agenda of like the um all you need is treats and they haven't worked with serious dogs i don't care what the fuck they say because if you if you're telling me that all you need is treats with some like with serious dogs and red zone dogs you're you you don't understand dogs Mm -hmm. and you need to go back and start really studying and i don't say that with anger or pissed off at you or upset with you you need to go start studying more because you're going to get hurt or you're going to get your clients hurt, mm-hmm. you know, because some of the dogs, they come and not only is it, oh, the training didn't work. So this is what people don't think about sometimes is they go the budget route and usually the positive ones are the budget route. Right. <clears throat> and when I say that positive thing, I'm just talking about the people who all like do the same bullshit of just obedience and treats all day long. Right. That's all you need. No, it's not. Um, they're. They think it's just going to be like they, – they think it's going to work, obviously, right? But then the, the clients are, what's the worst that could happen? If it doesn't work out, we'll end up going to that dog guy in, in, at the ranch there, mm-hmm. right? <clears throat> well, what the worst could happen is, is you have already an anxious dog, an excited dog, a frustrated dog, and you start bringing uh, food, which represents excitement to that situation. And now you're just charging that dog up in the theory of I'm getting a physical thing which, what, that I want, which is a dog to look at me or pay attention to something or get them to do some physical thing. But they don't pay attention to the mind. The mind's right. revved up. The mind's, and they don't talk about overall relationship, leadership, energy, state of mind, follow through. They don't talk about get no. have the, I mean, they're, they're all saying the same thing. And I'm not making this up. This is all from, not from what I've read. These are my clients telling me to my face. So I have no issue talking about this. <clears throat> Basically, most of them are saying, bring that big bag of chicken with you no matter where you go. Well, yeah, because you're going to need it. I said, listen, or, or I, hot dogs. I understand oh, the yeah, theory. Dogs, yeah. I understand the theory. But to me, that's, you know. Make sure you have all your lollipops when you're with your kid all the time or else they're not going to listen to you. And And then the theory is eventually they will without the food. Okay. Like, let me see it. You know? Mm -hmm. You're going to tell me that that excited dog is all of a sudden just going to walk by dogs without food in the future? Yeah, it's just going to take time. They always tell them that one. It's going to take a long time. Just, just, you know, just got to stick with it. And then a lot of them don't get there. Or it gets a little bit better and then they sell that. I'm like, look at how great he's doing now and i'm like i'm looking at it and i'm like wait did you do training or right. no because then you're looking really at like, bad wow the dog could be so much better you know it's a hard one because then i get into the whole thing of like um just skill level period mm-hmm. like i played sports so I, I like enjoy competition i enjoy you trying to <laughs> trying to be the best you know what i mean keep getting better but i also am like truthful if it, like when we would be, like i remember back in the day like if i gave up a home run i give a fucking home run so i gotta like recover and do the next thing but but like they like give up a home run, meaning they like 
told the dog to go bite basically through the food and all that. And then they blame the, the dog. They blame the umpire. They blame the stadium. They right. blame the, the bases. They blame the outfielders. Nothing but their method. Hey, dude, you were the one who threw that pitch. Right. And that was your, your thing. It wasn't the best strategy there. It was your error. Uh, yeah, well, that dog and that hitter, no, there was an error. Just admit <laughs> it. It's okay to admit it. So, yeah, and I, and I say it all the time. You'll hear me. I don't say it all the time, but it happens where I'll say, I'll be like, damn. And, and then after that, I say, what did you say damn for? And I'm like, because I missed the moment there. Mm-hmm. Or, I, yeah. or I tried an approach, and it wasn't as I planned, so now I had to adjust and pivot to another thing. You can usually – Oh, yeah. You, you know, you, you can get, get it back. It's just – it's because usually the errors aren't going to be that, that huge. Right. If I'm thinking that it's going to – yeah. You were saying also about um, – They can be, though. They can be. People that, like, supposedly have done training and stuff like that. You had somebody recently that had like a good amount of training, like six months, six months worth of training, and yeah. the dog was like not in good shape. Yeah. Oh my god. The, that's yeah, a lot that's, of clients. That's all the time. Yeah. It's constant. Like four trainers, three trainers, one, six Gordon trains, the, mm-hmm. the, and they all end up here. And I and I keep saying like, wh- how do we get these people first so they're not wasting money? You know what I mean? I, yeah. I want them to stop wasting money so they can right. learn this the right way. And by the way, not only wasting money, but but developing bad habits too. Right. So now it's like the more since that person now fucked this dog up, I have to like we have to extinguish all these bad. So it's like this, just so you people understand when I'm working, whether it's a dog training client or um, a board and train like behavior modification thing, the dog stays with us. The first phase is destroying all the old shitty habits. So we have to go into destruction mode, like destroy, 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 destroy. Okay, now we broke those habits. Then the dog, we start bringing in the new habits. That's where the dog goes into this confusion phase of Mm -hmm. like, they're still conditioned to do some old things, but they're learning these new things and they're not sure about certain things. And that's usually in that confusion moment when we're working with the clients of the, the clients are going, um, is it, he doesn't seem like he likes this. And that's when they're the most uncomfortable. And then I say to the people, um, you know that the alcoholics, they really like alcohol. Doesn't mean it's good for them. Right. So when you say, hey, we're not going to have you have that alcohol anymore, right. they're going to have a meltdown too. So it's the same thing. It's like, like the, it's, a, it's a condition thing, right? So yeah, that's what it comes down to. And then so we're doing the confusion thing. Then now we're bringing the new shit in. Now the new shit in starts getting better and better. And these are getting really extinguished. And then now the dog's now uh, like learns what is he supposed to do officially. And then now you're in repetition mode mm-hmm. of continuously doing that, which we're doing. And the clients that continue doing. Right. That's really what it comes down That's to. All it's this. a process. Yes. So it's, when, not an, when, it's not a quick fix. Yeah. When they come with with the, the the dogs who have now learned all these habits, they've been charged up on food, or they're like sit, stay, yeah. And the dogs like that. It's like wow, we got to do a lot to extinguish this excitement towards food. We got this overall anxiety that's been developed mm-hmm. now. This speed, this overall like higher state. Like I, you know, I always say it's like like those kind of dogs. It's a car that you put you – know, like you were driving, right? The car – like the dogs in the dog park, they just say this is the cars driving around, right? Or on a walk, driving. You get home. The people who are doing like the, the excitement training thing, like sit down, good, look at me, yeah. They, their car like almost goes into idle. It doesn't actually turn off and like like rest. Right. But the car is just sitting like – uh, like, what, are we gonna? Are we driving soon? Or like, 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 when are we? It's like, just relax, dude. He's like, I can. The car's the my brain's still running, even though it's running at a lower level. It's still running. I need mm-hmm. to be doing something at all times. That's how anxiety develops. Whereas what we're trying to train the, or teach our clients, honestly, train our clients to achieve with their dog, is go take them to the drag strip if you need to. Take them on a marathon. Take them on a run. Take them to wherever. Like. Like, you know, drive on the highway with it, go around the suburbs, go to the store with it, whatever. And when you come home, go to your bed and turn off, go in the garage and turn off. Right. So you're not, so you don't overheat. So we don't use all the gas. So we don't, you know, like good, good or bad analogy. Right there. That was really a good one. It was a decent one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really good one. But yeah, that's really the, what the thing is. So I'm trying to get people to understand how to like turn it off, turn it off, turn that shit off. Uh, and then be able to turn it on. Like I want, like, look, we have a car that has a little speed in one of them. I li- like, we can use it, <laughs> you know, I use it, but that doesn't mean that the car sitting there ready. Like, when are we going to go? When are we going to go? When are we gonna go? No, like <laughs> he's got, you guys get what my point is. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Kept yeah. Going. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. What's next? Steve. That, that was good. Everyone understood that. Well, one you, you wanted oh, to go yeah, back. I just wanted to go back to what real quick. When it first started, you just like want to see the fight again. Okay. So no. you're going to put it back. Uh, you can press play if you want. 
press play. Press K. Nope. It's like I gotta press like there you go. Like. And you wanna go back? No no no. Keep no keep going. Just let it play. Look at the lab like come on bro, give me some space. Look how the humans react. That's how our, our staff would react. The, the guy's taking pictures. Oh, the guy's taking pictures. Um, that's what I really wanted to see because I wasn't paying attention what do, what, to the humans. So what do people do in a dog park when that happens? They panic. They yep. scream. Well, this they won't run. happen in a dog park, likely. This would be a full-on fight in a dog yeah, park. Yeah. Where people are trying to break up. Look at the other guys fighting. Playing. Yeah. Um, but people panic, so they so there's already if you can you can feel it even through here like when the energy goes it gets high, Rah! right? And the people no get him pull him away. Yeah. So there there's already this amount of energy there, and they're God, get him out and grab him and run, pour water. Ah! They're just screaming and yelling. Adding so they're fuel adding to more. The fire. And the dogs are like yeah, let's go fucking crazy, let's do this. Mm. As opposed to we just need to handle this situation, separate these dogs, calm them down, and then go walk them. Mm -hmm. Like so we have so we can recover this this confrontation and it's not left. Because that's what happens. People, a big fight happens, panic, remove the dog. I can't tell you how many dogs we get like this. And then the dogs leave. That's the last memory of the right. situation. That was Jake. Yeah. So that's the last memory. And then the, now the dog's last memory of being with dogs was they attack mm -hmm. and they bite. And there's craziness and trauma and all this kind of thing. So now they're going to – and then if you get that dog who believes he's leader of that human, now he's keeping – He's making the decision of we have to keep all dogs away because they mean danger. And it freaks my fucking human out. Right. So then the dog starts reacting member. on leash. Yeah. Everywhere. And they react. That's Jake. React to all dogs. Keep them all away. And then they come to us. And mm -hmm. then we got to clean up this mess. That's really what it comes down to every time. That's so uh, Every time for those see, kind of cases. Yeah. So many clients say that, oh, my yeah. dog doesn't like this type of dog because right. it was attacked by that, yeah. that breed yep. in the dog park. Yep. It's not they don't like. It's just an association. So dogs right. are associations like this. So Jake, German Shepherds, equaled potential to be attacked, tension, dominance, whatever mm -hmm. the hell. Now, obviously, he lives with one, so now it's a new association. Now it's an association of you'll be constantly moving, <laughs> fucking pain in my ass. Yeah. What, how do you have this much energy? It's possible. You're, 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 you have no bad intentions, though, I realize yeah. now. You're just yeah. annoying. You're, you know? you're my annoying <laughs> yeah, little yeah. brother. Yeah, Nico's just annoying to Jake. Um, yeah, but that's that. What's next? You ready for a uh, throwback? Yeah. Here goes a throwback. Throwback. <laughs> throwback video. Oh, yeah. Oh, this yeah, is, you, really this is your throw. This is a quick throwback, but mm -hmm. this is a throwback from. So, Steve, what? when did we shoot Probably this? Three years ago. I think this is 2018. It is. Yeah, I was inside like three years ago. This was, I believe, Steve. So, we ended up the not actually video. working with this lady for whatever No, this reason. was an assessment. Mm -hmm. Um, we, yeah, it, was it was just an assessment. Yeah. This was an assessment. And, and like I said, normally I don't do things, but this is, again, this lady had been through multiple training. I don't know if she had moved or, or whatever happened. For some reason, we didn't end up working with her. Yeah, I don't know the exact situation. But, <clears throat> I think she lived kind of far away, too. Um, but, yeah, this guy came, and, um, yeah, it was a situation where she had been through multiple trainers again whole thing mm -hmm. and she was like this dog and, and you can see the belief of her is like this dog is a disaster he's a mess she doesn't even believe he could be rehabilitated kind of mm -hmm. thing so sometimes not all so if you're thinking that all oh, like i feel that way too so now i'll just <laughs> go do assessment and steve will handle my dog like nine times out of ten or nine times out of, or 99 out of 100 i won't but for this one just and who the guy was too because i was like this guy is not that Right. Believe it or not. Yeah. So most people are going to see, look, Rottweiler, the prong collar, the growling, the barking, the fixation on dogs and all that. There, I was like, this guy just frustrated. Mm -hmm. He's not bad. This reaction is a bunch of bullshit, too. And I'll explain why in this in this thing. So let me play this thing. If I'm not mistaken, this is our second video that we shot together. Is it? Way back when, yeah. One, one of the first uh, sh videos that we've shot together. I, I can do this clip for you. Jamie, your computer. <laughs> so it automatically goes to I was me. Yeah. Such a joke. That. We, we could have yeah, been using. would have been inappropriate, though. What, you, uh, what, what the rainbow? All your world? weird websites you go to and shit. Oh, like, I know. Oh, yeah. Viruses. And it's like, I don't know. Yeah. Connection lost. Yeah. No, it's just we'll overloaded. It it's yeah. like, you never shut off. Well, yeah, we'll get it back. Okay. My computer's like the car that never shuts <laughs> off. Well, I, and I had to shut it <laughs> off, dude, before we started this. I was like, hold on. Your, your computer needs to be reset. Um, yeah, all the shady sites is a yeah, problem. Um, so, Steve, you see right there where it says play? 
What? Do you see right there where it's yeah, get it all out. Button? Yeah, pi. Yeah. All right, cool. I got you here now. Hopefully. Yep. No worries. Well, try now. We could have been using Steve's computer, and it would have been it would have been the, would the have reverse. Been yeah, it probably would have been. No worries. I'm gonna I'm gonna do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do. A, it looks a like it started to play though. It, it it wants to, but it's like giving us a little bit of a glitch, so we'll redo this. So we'll be ready to deal with this shit. Unfortunately, yeah. Podcast on the fly. Yeah, it happens. This is out. So okay, this is another thing. Um, it's like this kind of stuff, right? So most people have meltdowns, and this is their worst nightmare. Is what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. I just know that these things happen. It's not working to plan. And now everyone's gonna freak the fuck out and all this thing. Like in my opinion, like preparation is important. Be prepared, right? It's but what what do you you do when things go wrong? So this is what what do you do? I was prepared for the walk. I was prepared for this. What do I do now? And I was not expecting my dog to be this way. Well, default, be calm, stay confident that we're gonna solve the problem here. I don't mean to cut you off. I just wanted to see if it's gonna yeah. play. Nico. And it does, but it's giving it an issue here. Nico. Okay, perfect. So we we got it back, and that's true. You have to stay calm, and we're gonna get it back on as yeah, soon as we, we can. Yeah, we gotta get it back. And and again, this is what I was talking about when it came to a business or something that you're doing, even if it's like I'm learning a skill or whatever, is the long game and slowly but surely compounding and getting better and better. So like to me, I'm focused on right now. Just like this is what I do with dogs. Just so you guys understand it very clear. I'm focused on right now. Well, we've progressed to having this thing here and I can now point on it and I can like stop things and review videos. That's what I'm focused on. I'm not focused on the fact that the fucking PowerPoint like like had a meltdown Crash for a second there. Who gives yeah. a shit? Like like we just gotta get it back up and deal with it. On your end there you can press the so green button again. Going back, where focus goes, energy flows. So let's focus on the improvements, the progress that we're getting a little bit better. And now we learn from the mistakes that happen. Mm -hmm. So it's like success and learn from the mistakes. We had success, great, keep that going. I made a mistake, let me learn from it. Mm -hmm. That's what life really should be about. Learn from it and then th they take fucking action and do something about it. And what do we learn from this one? Jamie, your computer? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we learned that Jamie is, a, is addicted to porn sites. So anyway. <laughs> you would, you would. It's not the millions of, millions of document, documents no, that you have on there. No, it's none of that. It's not the thousands of tabs that, that you have open on your shady websites. You guys see my websites. fucking, yeah. um, <laughs> Desktop is a mess. Yeah, you guys want to see it? You guys want to see no, the desktop let's here? Not. Let's look. Let's look it's at my it. My organized chaos. Let's right. go. Here we go. One, two. So can three. I play this? Um, if it decides to work. Okay, so that's working. Let me see if I press. Yeah. Press K. Press K. So now it's not on the podcast next week. So she was she always in a tense state, and she's petting good boy, good yep. boy, good boy. So she's trying to convince him or negotiate with him to stay calm. Yep. In reality, she was petting the excitement and the franticness and the, and the tension and the adrenaline. So she was actually increasing it unknowingly. So that's what we're going to work with her about. I want to see how this guy does with other dogs. Oh boy. On this episode of the... <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, three years ago. It's amazing how much has changed in three years. That's what I, I think know. about. <laughs> yep. So look at that. Like that's a perfect example of thinking back three years ago in the winter. I was doing this. Not that I'm like doing this. I still do this stuff. But like it's we just different. Hoboken, the gear is different. You know, it's it's the the, the, the video quality is the, everything's different about mm -hmm. it. So in three years we've progressed to look at all this shit. We're in a ranch and all this. But in the oh. moments, if I if I would have focused on. Uh, well, I didn't in, like grow that much in one day. Then, uh, yeah, if you just focus on like what's not happening in enough, then that's what you're looking at. That's mm -hmm. what's gonna happen. You're gonna slow yourself down. Sometimes you need reminders too. Like when you look back at this stuff, and I you're do like, this. Oh shit! Like, yeah, I do, really I do it. Okay, let's start the video. Over. Okay, let me go back here. Okay. All right, let me first. Look before we even play the fucking thing. Dog in front. 
Uh, no tension on leash just yet, but he's fixated and the owner is irrelevant right now, aside from the tension she's going to apply, which is going to increase him. Her only use, and her only use there right now is to be like an angle getting off the leash. Which at one point there. she wraps the leash around the freaking pole. Yeah, because she couldn't get her hands around it. Yeah. Nico. Look at that shit. So even the word Nico, so that to me tells me that it triggers him. That the, yeah, that word has been associated with like, and that happens a lot. So people, the, you know what happens a lot where I see a lot of is the dogs who come here when you say the look at me thing. Mm -hmm. Right. So they've been conditioning that thing. So they, they, go, they look at me and the dog will like go like this and look, look at the look human around. for a second and yeah. then start going like this. Where's the dog? Hmm. So their association is like get food in an excited state and then go bark at that dog after. It's like a test. <laughs> yeah. Look at this shit. First of all, her, her angle, her body, if I was in this position, my body, if, if she's faced this way, she's got to turn all the way, like, away. Mm -hmm. Like, be facing that way. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, she can have leverage. Like she has to be, yeah, like, she's, like she's facing this. Like this. <laughs> she's doing this, so she needs to be this. Yeah. Yeah, in that moment. What do you call that? What? What do you call that stance? I don't know. You called it something yesterday, I feel like. Baseball stance, like you called it something. I mean, athletic. Uh, athletic stance, yeah, it's something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's like an athletic position. Like athletic position, they call somebody in like athletic position. They're like, they're the red, like the body. The, they have their core. They have their legs. Their legs are balanced, and that's a that's a big part of like the dog handling and stuff. Is what people need to understand is leash handling is a skill. Mm -hmm. It's like a sport almost to a degree. I mean, they are doing it as a sport. I mean, they do competitions for leash handling, like obedience and all that. So it's a it's a talent and a skill on how to do that. And I think people don't understand that that much and they just think it's a leash and you just put it on your dog and walk them. And I, I, I'm explaining to people, I'm like, look, I know you've had this tool for a while, but it would be like me handing, like, it, perfect example, let's just say this is a, pe like a regular pencil. So this is the tool. But how I'm using the tool is I've learned, ah, so I have to sharpen this and then I have to write and I hold my fingers here and write the words. That's, a, that's what I... A lot of people who come to me are holding the thing like this and they're like trying to draw like, you know what I mean? Like it's just, the, the handling is really poor. It's just really poorly done. And I, the analogy I like to use a lot is, is golf because it's a super common sport mm -hmm. that it's like, and a lot of people can play it, but don't know how to play it that well, you know? So I'm like, and a lot of people walk a dog, but they can't walk a dog that well. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, it's like me handing you a golf club and saying, all right, now hit that shit right down the middle. And you're like, uh, how the fuck do I like? I know, I know the concept. I, I know what it's supposed to look like, right. but I, I don't know how to do the thing. You know. So then I'm like, literally saying, okay, so now we're gonna hold the leash like this. I'll hold the grip of the club mm. like this. Now we're gonna our backswing is gonna be like this. We're gonna turn when he looks away. Like I'm teaching them the basics. At a, and the reason we use a long line a lot is it gives you way more time to to adjust to what the dog is doing. So he's running out. He's going oh, out there. Oh, he seems like he's far away now. And now I'm gonna turn as opposed to like. Right here. Woo, 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 woo. That's mm -hmm. where it gets really quick when the dog is right next to you kind of thing. So that's just what I'm saying is like this is the person holding the pencil like this, mm -hmm. like what I'm saying. She doesn't, she's not sure what to do, but she just doesn't know. And this is people just don't know about dogs, what to do with them in these scenarios. Yeah. <laughs> Look, so th th there's my fucking point is her being facing this way. The body, I don't know if you can hear it, but the body – because it, it, it can easily, look at the way the human body can go. So if I'm standing here with a Rottweiler, let me just make this as big as you can see. If I'm standing here with a Rottweiler like this, all that my body has to move is this, and I just lost balance. Mm -hmm. my, my balance point is now all the way over here. Then he goes a little bit more, and I, where do I, how do I catch my balance? I'm gone. Right. But if I'm stay facing this way, and I have the leash folded here, my elbow in, and I'm holding it here, this guy can be pulling, and I just have to throw him. It's like martial arts. I mean, when you if I was going to talk in, in jiu-jitsu or something like that, I'm trying to get a, a thing here, I turn this way to get some. You know what I mean? And so it's all leverage. And this is why I talk a lot body about mechanics. body mechanics. And I, and I talk about, I just got out of breath and fired up from that. It's crazy. <laughs> it's like, not a good sign. Because I'm thinking, like, I'm like, yeah, we got to toss him. And that. But look at how my mindset just got up and how I started breathing heavier. Mm -hmm. Not good, but. <laughs> That's what's happening in this moment. Um, but why oh, I also recommend people to do martial arts. Because that's all about learning about your body. It's You're going to be learning about, like, how, the dog's learning about his body. He's walking and learning how about leverage and figuring out, well, this is what, how you're going to hold me. I'm going to do this instead. 
But what I've learned from the, the leash handling over the years is how to be like the black belt in jujitsu. If like if that opponent, the dog, starts going doing something, I'm moving this way. I'm shifting this. I'm doing that. I'm moving my hands here. I'm doing the leash here. I'm doing whatever. Something like that. So that's what has to happen in here. She just doesn't know what to do. Luckily, we were there because that's like we have to grab the dog there and prevent because that thought she's going for a ride. I think but she said that she had been dragged of down course. a couple of times. She's definitely, you can see sure. it right there. Look at all that shit. <laughs> but before that, yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but it's just it, like, look at that. The humans are relevant. Tension on leaves, mm -hmm. focus, uh, focused on dog. Once you get to this point, you're kind of fucked already. It's too late. Yeah, because the tension's on there. So the so the availability to even like pop the leash to try to get some sort of interruption is not available now because if anything you're doing is you're gonna pull. Right. If I had the leash like this, if my if the dog had like caught me by surprise and got got that tension and was like at the end, I would actually let the leash go a little bit, like so I could get slack, so I'd go and then pop and then hmm. to create the what? And again, I'm not looking for a physical pain. I'm looking for the mind to be interrupted from the from the pattern that it's doing. You have to break a fucking pattern. Right. I just watched a video on this. Breaking pattern? It was about, they were talking about it. And I, I was like, just replace dog in this. And this is exactly what I'm doing with the fucking dog. I'm going to find that for the next uh, okay. podcast. Nice. But it was basically talking about how habits and patterns, you got to change your habits. Mm -hmm. So how do you change your habits? You got to do a drastic change. Da, da, da. So that's what I'm looking for. Is like for this guy, and when you see us like do a pop on the leash, or if I did a touch on the side there, or whatever, something to interrupt him, or if I did the clicker when we do the positive interruption thing, whatever it is, I got to figure out what works for that dog and that human being that gets him to not be so fixated on those dogs and and break his fixation, so I can now influence him to do something else. Right. You know, that influence might be sit down and be quiet. That influence might be calm this way towards food. That might be here. I'm going to bounce the ball over here. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do depending on the dog. Well, every dog and depending is different. On the human. Yeah. And depending on the human too, though, because that's a, that's part of the puzzle too. People say that dog, what you need is just the treats. No, what? Well, who's the human? Where is he food motivated? What's his sensitivity level? Is he actually have really aggression towards those dogs and wants to bite those fucking dogs? Is he just excited about dogs? Because he goes to daycare every day and he, and he hasn't learned to be calm, walk by dogs. Right. You know, how old is this guy? Has he ever then you know attack the dog is he bit people what this is the fbi investigation that we <laughs> yeah. do and then i'm like taking all this data and trying to see all right so how do we solve this problem right. like how do we solve this crime and that's how many happens. times do you say too like oh well this dog really needs this but i know the owner yeah is not really capable of doing that's that right. so i have to figure out a way to communicate to the owner yes. and figure out something different for so them to do yeah that's the that's like when if i'm a, I'm a therapist and i do couples and the, the, the couple comes to me and says, no matter what, we're going to work this out. No matter what. Mm -hmm. We're not giving up on each other. We will not break up. Okay. Can I let you know, in my professional opinion, that you guys are not very compatible? So the, we can get to ideally a better place in this relationship, but it may not be the most optimal relationship of what you guys are looking for. Right. So that's like most of the clients. I shouldn't say most, you know, a good amount though, who come is right off the bat. I'm noticing that these two energies are not compatible mm -hmm. or not very compatible. There's a level zero to 10, like, damn, these guys are like a four, you know, these guys are like a six or super compatible. They just don't know. They just don't know what she just doesn't know what to do with the dog. Yet, right. You know, which we do get a lot of those too. And then it, but then this is also a big factor that comes into it too, is like the dog, the, the human and the dog might've been compatible from puppyhood or when they initially got the dog, if they had done the dog psychology with the dog. Mm. But now because they've, they've encouraged some bad shit with this dog, and now the dog is resource guarding, and now the dog is, is guarding the home, and now the dog is, is um, claiming the bed from them and all that, now they become even more incompatible, and now they need like a professional to like come and do it because the human didn't know what to do, and, and they're thinking, well, I'm not doing anything to have detriment. Yeah, you are, because you're not doing anything about this, about mm -hmm. that, about this, you're encouraging this, you shouldn't be, you, you rewarded that, don't do that. Like, right. So th that, that happens too, where they, they, they can become incompatible, because they've created such a stability in an animal, dog, because they're using human psychology on canine, canine psychology, dog psychology. There's a certain level of compatibility, but you're saying that compatibility can get worse, yeah. right? What about – Okay, so me and Nico are pretty compatible, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. So we're pretty compatible. 
she's saying that because he's a maniac, right? Just you guys know. Um, I think they know that. Yeah. We're compatible, but if I got him from puppyhood and I started charging him up, good boy, good boy, like, hi, puppy, mm-hmm. and th- didn't create any calmness with him, didn't socialize him like he should have been. They didn't create rules, bounds, and limitations. Told him to jump on. He would be. Oh my god! Right now, at this age, like, pr- like pretty incompatible with me. Yeah. Or more so incompatible because I got to do a lot of work now to get him to a more to be more compatible with me. So you're saying that they can get less compatible, right? Yeah. But what about incom? Look at look at if I went from from Nico puppy, right? When I first met him, so I have a puppy who hasn't been fucked up yet, right? He's there. And a human who understands dog psychology. So that's a good – and who we were is – makes us – so who we – okay. Who, who is the dog? Who are they at the core? Who is the human at the core? Got it. Those, that, that's the first part of the compatibility. Now does – the dog knows what to do with dog psychology. That's their psychology. Right. Does the human understand enough dog psychology for what that dog needs? You know what I mean? And if they don't know it, they don't know enough psychology. Now they just became a little bit more incompatible. Mm -hmm. And then as they start fucking this dog up and teaching them all these human things and making them a human and treating them as such, not fulfilling them, not, 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 um, challenging them physically, psychologically. Right. They start going in the opposite direction. So now this dog becomes, starts becoming unstable, imbalanced more and more and more. And now they're even worse of incompatibility because now not not only have they, not only have, has the dog become out of balance, but it's also now associated the human in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So that's who the human is to them. So now the human has to do a bunch of work to break all those habits. Da, da, da. So that's what I'm saying. And now they become even m- way more incompatible because right. there's so much shit that has to even happen because now they're worse. So I, I get what you're so saying. So there's, there's like levels and, and I understand, of compatibility. Right. I understand that part and I understand what you're saying. But what about what about incompatibility? Can you ever get more compatible is my point. Yeah. Like, can you like fix the incompatibility yes. to the point where you guys are like now like, okay, we're, we're a good it, match. It uh, depends, depends on the case. Right? It yeah. depends on the case. So um, I'm trying to think of who like who we've had. You get, you get what I'm trying to ask though, right? Like a, like a perfect example would be like Vinny with his dog. Like they're compatible. Those two are, two are definitely compatible. He just didn't know enough about dog psychology and what to do with her, excuse me, to, to prevent her from reacting to other dogs. Mm-hmm. So they were compatible who they were, but because Vinny, Vinny, Vinny actually knows a decent amount about stuff, but he didn't know like to the degree of what to do with dog psychology. And remember with him, uh, the Jersey Shore show, everyone in the world who, who has, do- who's a dog trainer or whatever is trying to give him instruction on what to do. So he's so he's getting, like, all this oh, information. getting all this stuff. I don't even know where to go with this. Right. And how know? do I apply it correctly? Yeah. So, so they were, so they were incompatible, but now they're becoming way more compatible is my point because of all the work we've done with Tida to slow her down. Now he knows what to do with this and now they really know. So for instance, all right, me and Cassie, right? Compatibility. We're pretty compatible of people, but there are certain things that can make us incompatible from our past and our Mm -hmm. shit and all this stuff that we have to work through. So if we don't deal with it, we don't work through it. We don't uh, have a problem solving mindset and like seek to learn from the fight or learn from the confrontation or whatever, and then move forward, then, then we'll never be compatible, you know? Right. But to me, like, all right. So I think what you're asking is, I think what it is, is there's a certain level of compatibility at the, at the core level that needs to be there. So for instance, if I have a 97 year old, uh, four foot 11, 91 pound woman, or would you say like this? I was honestly, that's why I was talking about this like is because this, woman this, this woman, so this is not as good, but I'll explain why. So the, the grandmother, 97 old frail, blah, 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 can barely walk anymore. Let's just say, and a one and a half year old high drive Nika yeah. German shepherd there, there, you're not going to get compatibility with that. Right. You can get closer if, you, if she has help with like help, a treadmill, but, but, but right. her treadmill and, and stuff like that, but yeah, no, like, not and, so can much. she even get the dog in treadmill? No. Can, I mean, she can really like, right. and that's where people need to be honest. That's, yeah. that's kind of my point to bring so that up. It, so, so the grandmother doing it at the most elite possible level herself is still not compatible. Yes, yeah, still, we'll still never be able to do what I can with the dog, just due to age, due yeah. to you know my my who my compatibility is with him, mm-hmm. who I am as a person. So that's what that's what I'm saying. That people have to understand. So that's why I'm saying here's the big fucking thing for everybody: when you're selecting the dog, find the right compatibility energy first. Go first. Who is this? dog what is this dog like is it pushy i'm kind of passive don't get that dog you know what i mean i'm really assertive this dog seems really weak in the back of his corner don't get that dog either you know 
Uh, I'm a CrossFit athlete, and I'm very outgoing, and this and that. Great. Get Nico. Yeah. That's a good compatibility for you, you know? And I want to work them every day. And my work schedule, I only work four hours a day from home. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Nico's your dog. You got him. Uh, I'm retired, and I'm... You know, I go for like one 30-minute walk a day. and da, da, da. Good. Jake's available for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. And I'm, and, um, I'm a happy-go-lucky person. And, but I do expect a little bit of rule of dungeons limitations in the house because Jake needs that shit. Yeah. Still, yeah. Perfect compatibility. Mm -hmm. You know? So really good compatibility. So that's what I'm saying. There's so many degrees to this. And, and it's like the big elephant in the room that no one talks about, which is the beginning. Like, like you know, we talk, about, we talk about people like that guy's not good for you. Mm -hmm. that girl's not that's good true. Says, you guys aren't meant to be together. Well, well, I think it's about reading the energy too. Like, like for example, when people go and they want to rescue a dog too, they're doing the same with humans, right? But I like the go, way that thing like, looks and I like the way it makes me feel just by looking at it. Right. That's Tinder, by the way. Tinder is the same as like pet finder. Yeah. Going through. Oh my God. Look, he's cute. And he's got this job and oh look at the, he's a bulldog puppy and that, like that's what people are doing that's how right. they're selecting their fucking spouses that's how they're selecting dogs that's how they're selecting like all this stuff so to me i think it was you that said to me it was a few years ago we were talking about like online dating yeah and you had said that you were on I don't know, yeah like eHarmony or something yeah. and, and i think it was you that said um it was like when you fill out your profile it's like you're trying to be the best person possible because you want to you want to put yourself yeah. out there and attract people. So the person that that is looking at this, like that's as good as you're ever going to that's be. The best because you're putting it all out there. And that, by the way, that's, and that's like so long. Steve, and that's pet Steve pet will pet. catfish the hell out of everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's the best. That's but the, it's so true. Yeah, that's what everyone's doing with the dogs. They put the dog up, they show it, and they say she's just a little um, barky. Meanwhile, the dog like fucking goes bananas if you right, leave him right. in the kennel. Like they 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 say this is the best this dog will be. And not that good with other dogs. Not good with dogs, okay? No. Like, we have to understand that. Like, yeah, that's the best that they're going to show. And people are lying, too. Yes. So they're lying and saying, oh, "Of course, very outgoing. And this now you meet the person. They're like, hi. <laughs> you know, like, no, you're not. So that's a, it, it's, it's, yeah, I agree. It's, it's something to realize, like, you have to understand who the, like, I don't care what the person, I mean, you have to care, I guess, what the person looks like. Because people care. They care what the presentation is, right? You care, but it's almost. they care what the dog looks like. Yes, I don't care what it's almost says. like you want to put like your best photo out there because then it's like when someone meets you, you're like, oh, you, no, you, you yeah, don't yeah, look yeah. like yeah. your photos. That's what people do. That's right? what people do. They put their best. If people are smart. They should put the like, their like average photos. Yeah. How do you how do you choose an average photo? I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah. how do you do that? That's how Jamie's doing it. Eharmony and Match.com. She's like, let me put see. my average photo. Where do I the shittiest? Yeah. Right here. This is, oh my God. Seriously? Like, oh, this is a bad hangover. Seriously? Let me post that one on my profile. How do you pick that? You know? said average, not the worst. No, no. I know what you're saying, like it, it, of of not being real. I'm just gonna now, I'm, now I'm gonna do like a, I have to like do a test. That the best gotta do some research. Just realness. That's answer the best. Answer real. One. Be truthful because like you're lying to yourself there. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna attract somebody based on that. Right. Which is not who you are. Right. And no one can be yourself better than you. So just be your fucking self and improve yourself and grow yourself and get better and find someone who's compatible with you. Right. So if I put an average picture, then when someone meets me, they're gonna be like, oh my, this person's even better looking than I thought. Yeah. And yeah that's that i'm like waiting for i'm like waiting for yeah. i'm like looking at steve what is he gonna say to yeah. that one yeah, yeah he's yeah. trying to think of a smart ass yeah. comment to make. he is you oh see him God, right about this video. we got into dating somehow but yeah like but it's, it is it's compatibility these people probably the my point is with this woman and the dog they could have been decently compatible um if with an understanding of dog psychology so that was the factor like yeah this this should probably be with someone who maybe because he was a he's a young dog He's a young guy. Like, this is a compatible. And I don't like, remember this, if she had him from compatible with me, for sure. Yeah. Like, this guy would have been, like, fit right in with the pack and okay. everything. He would, I, I don't would know have if you guys know this. That day. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but what what would have, what happened to these people? Do we know that? Can we find out? Do you know Do what I'm I saying? Know? Yeah, can we oh, find out? we can find out. I don't know off the top of my head. I'm just wondering, like, what, uh, you know I, what I'm saying, Steve? My guess would be that they, they rehomed the dog or something uh, happened. My guess would be. That's your guess. What is your guess? You're saying, oh, what did happen? Yeah, what happened um, to them? I thought you were talking about the past. Like, we, what we happened? We can see, we can see what up ended up hap point. happening to them. We can find out. This is what happened. Yeah. But by this, the is, way. this is your guess. He he guessed that they rehomed. What, what would be your guess? That the same thing they rehomed. 
probably if they were able to read. This is what happens. Mm-hmm. It's usually is usually this is like they we explain. So when I do these assessments, I'm very clear on expectations based on what I'm seeing, how long, and what we can get out of that amount of time. So sometimes people, it's. It's usually not the price because we've already seen the price of what this costs to do this stuff, right? So, but the thing is, what changes a lot is when they realize what they need to do. Mm-hmm. So, when they realize that how much this is the same fucking thing that I talk about all the time, when they realize is this is what I want. So, I want my guy Miko to walk calmly, ignore dogs, and do this. Okay, so in their mind, it's like, what do I need to do in this walk? Take this dog and fix it for me. But when they realize, no, 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 we'll do all, all that stuff and get this dog to a really good place. But these are the things you're going to need to do to mm-hmm. own this dog and get this expectation that you have to be a successful outcome. And then they say they look at it and they say it costs that and human resources and time and energy and money and whatever. Fuck that shit. Mm-hmm. And then they rehome the dog or they go find the budget option yeah. and then they, you know, they do the – they blast them on e collar or something, right. or they play with food and these bu- more budget budget friendly. And then but they say, say, rehoming is okay. Yeah, yeah. Like it's we'll okay to, to do that. that. But then they say, I know it was the dog. I know it was the dog. I knew it was the dog because the training's not working. No, it's just that the training you're doing is not good. And you're going for the more budget things and it's not fucking giving you the real shit. Because she's lady was through training. She was, this dog was through multiple trainers. Mm-hmm. And these are the ones where I roll my eyes almost. I'm like, what are these trainers doing for real? I did this in 15 minutes. You were there. It was one of the first videos you shot. That's probably why Adam like stayed. He's like, damn, this guy's <laughs> better than Caesar. No, oh, to be honest. As I'm wearing training Caesar's way. <laughs> yeah, to really. Be, no, but I, to I, be honest, we got 60,000 views on that one. And yeah, I was like, no, really. we really, really got something yeah, here. That, yeah. that is, this this video, to be honest, yeah. was a deciding factor. But the thing is, is like, you give it to me or or Caesar comes. We're going to do this. It's, it's, it, this is like not that. We would be saying the same shit to the camera. Which is, this case is not that bad. This is a frustrated mm-hmm. dog. He doesn't have rules. About him. Zero yes. respect for the human whatsoever. And, you know, she told us, uh, he climbs on the couch, he sleeps with me in bed, yeah, mm-hmm. foodie excited, I don't really walk him because he's too pulley. And so it's obvious, frustration as hell. But who I'm looking at is who are you underneath? Right. By the way, how I'm doing it when I hire people too. I've trained this many dogs, I've done this, blah, blah, blah. Well, who are you though? Are you going to be a pain in my ass? Right. Are you, do you think you're hot shit? Are you not a team player? Are you going to give me all these complaints and bullshitting that it's not to your standards? You think mm-hmm. you're worth that much already? You haven't done anything? Hmm. I'm assessing all those things. You're more, hired. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm assessing more of those things more than like what the skill set is. Who are you? Right. Same thing I'm doing with the dogs. Who are you? By the way, business owners out there, if you do that, you'll you'll let me know how it works out for you. Start hiring people based on who they are. Hire motivated people, hustle people, open-minded people. You're saying not based off the resume. Yeah, loyalty people, dedicated people. If I'm sitting here and it's like like Harvard graduate, like MBA, this and all this – thing and i'm and they're smug and they have an attitude and i think this and that and i have someone over here who's a high school graduate and is like i'm doing willing to do whatever it takes i'll be here i'll actually want to work for free and be uh, not saying they have to but i'll do whatever it takes i'll be here early i want to come late and i'm a harvard give me that guy all day mm-hmm. long for real right and if you're going into college too to be thinking about like these college degrees and stuff that to me as a business owner they're, all, they're really the only thing that I'm – if someone was to come and put something on the application, the things that would e- even I would even pay attention to would be like a Harvard, Stanford. You know what I'm saying? Like Ivy League. That's not to say that everyone that UPenn. comes from there is – No, it's not. But I'm saying that's something that I would be like they, – they've done something with their life that they were able to accomplish getting into a school like that. Mm-hmm. So that takes, that takes work to do that. So I'm, I'm like, all right, so they know how to like work at least. But have they – are this is this some spoiled rich kid? Is this someone who um, got in and now thinks they're hot shit because mm-hmm. they got in? So things can change once they got in. But that's something right. that my point is I would pay attention. If it's they went to pace like I did, whatever. They went to this like <laughs> for real. I'm being serious. But even like Well, I think it depends on the job too. I guess. Yeah, it does depend on the job, depending on what it is. But I'm just saying in general, for us, it's like like if I was a higher CEO, I went to Harvard. Well, okay. Like what did you learn? Let's see what your theory is. I didn't go to Harvard, but I've been running uh, this company for this long. My profits went to this. Okay, that's interesting too. I want right. to. I'm more of like, like prove it to me, show it to me, and who are you? Then like this is what I could do. Right. Well, everybody can also lie on paper. Yeah. So that, that's what my point is, and I'm thinking if you ask a lot of business owners, what are you looking for? Their the resume thing is like even even now it's like because that they're they're talking the best again with talking the best that they're ever gonna be. Right. This is the best of who I am. And by the way, I mean, I think you tip, can tell a lot from a resume because I look at too, like 
Okay, did how many jobs did they have? Were they only at, at each thing. of these jobs for a year, two years? Yeah. Were they somewhere long term? No, 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 that's a big they... factor for sure. It's, it's, yeah, that is See, a big factor. That's how you guys balance each other, though. Jamie's looking at those things, and you're looking at the energy. And that's yeah. how you, you really pick something I ask weird good. questions in interviews, yeah. too. I know you yeah. do. Really weird. Just to see what they answer. <laughs> Just see what it is. Yeah. Like, how, what do they say? Uh, yeah. yeah. And to, uh, another quick tip for business owners doing interviews, the, the, the human in front of you in that meeting is going to be their best version possible. True. They're yes. going to be in their best behavior. So if they show up late to an interview, big sign. The, I wouldn't even have the interview. <clears throat> There's been, there was one that I remember the people came and I was like totally disengaged. It was like I tried to just be respectful enough mm -hmm. to like have the interview, but they were like seven minutes late and it was very excuses and my car and blah. I'm just like, all right. Yeah, this isn't gonna work. This is the best that you can do. When it's all on the line, you showed up like this, and mm -hmm. I and this thing they they, they these people the, the, like when they come to, they think they're being slick, and I watch. I'm like watching them while you're asking questions. I'm like this, like just studying, <laughs> not creepy, but like just studying, and I'm watching them. We're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They they like looking at you like this, and then as like you the, they think you're not looking, they're like looking down at their phone. Like, what time is it? Like, is this almost done? Mm -hmm. And that that little thing, you didn't get fired. For me. I mean, you didn't get hired. Sorry. Yeah. Because I'm like, if you're already thinking about how you can get out of an interview to start this job, <laughs> yeah. you are not, not made for the job. And I'm saving your, I'm saving you the How much time. longer is this going to take? Yeah. How much yeah. longer? <laughs> Fuck. Then you're like, that, I'm thinking in my mind, then what? You're going to sit in front of a kennel for two and a half hours and that dog needs to calm down about mm -hmm. food. And this 10 minute interview is taking you. Give me a break. So just a little note on that. We should get back to this video. <laughs> yeah. We're getting good. Stop. Look at look at Dan. This is a guy who was working with us back in the day, trying to help him. I was waiting for him. I to had bring him standing that up. over there. Oh, I, didn't even I was realize. like, dude, just in yeah. case this dog, like, you got to be able to grab that leash because right. this just might, lady might fall over. <laughs> so what did we do? That's tethered, by the way. That's tethered. Yeah, to the I said I want to see if you just tether him. What he does. <laughs> <laughs> it's still really <laughs> see, like, okay. <laughs> this dog. <laughs> This guy really does that. That Roddy really wants to get who comes to our adventure camp on the left side, the uh, Airedale, and on the right is Rue, who's uh, was a walking client uh, for Little Frenchie. So yeah, so the, if this guy really wants to get to those dogs and go after them, he's gonna get there. Yeah, he's not going. He's going whoa, 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 whoa. Right. like it's a big show kind of thing. That is, and it, that tells me it's a, a lot of habit. Stop. So she was the dog was in a tense state and she's petting good boy. The average good. person walking by would be terrified. Of course, because it was Roddy and Prom, and the way, her making those noises, people run for the hills. Mm -hmm. So look, staring at dog. Remember we say you get what you pet, right? Mm -hmm. So you're getting right now fixation on dog, tension towards dog, excitement towards dog, no attention to human, and and the lady saying very good. Mm -hmm. That's like so many of people do that. They, they, the human human psychology to try to rationalize. It's okay. We're all going to relax. But they're really not realizing I'm doing this with anxious, nervous energy because that dog just became present mm -hmm. and you're feeling this way. So hopefully, and the dog's like, damn, this is a lot of shit. I got to get this dog out of here. Yeah. And I already have an issue with the dog and look what happened. All right, good boy. So she's trying to convince him or negotiate with him to stay. Dogs, yeah, you don't negotiate or convince. You have to actually make it happen with them, period. Um, yeah. they, they don't rationalize. You can't, like, talk to them and say, hey, listen, this is the thing. They, they yeah. live in the moment, you know, and they're reacting to a situation. But people think they're, like, doing, like, um... <laughs> Look at your face. Sorry. I'm just like, yeah, I know. <laughs> she was petting the excitement and the franticness and the, and the tension and the adrenaline. So she was actually increasing it unknowingly. So that's what we're going to work with her. And that's the most important part, increasing it unknowingly. Yeah. Right. Uh, didn't know. Right. She's not on purpose. What she was doing with that petting thing, I always say this, whether they, they, they do it with, the, like, the police dogs. Like, they're getting them mm -hmm. so crazy, and the guy standing there with, like, the stick and the bite sleeve, and, they, and they, the people going, eh, good boy. And then when they bite, and they get <laughs> they pet them. Yeah, because that's what they want. Yeah. Feel this. I want to encourage this intensity and, mm -hmm. this, and this aggression right now. Yes, do it, you know? So they don't realize they're doing the same thing. About how I see how this guy does with other dogs. <laughs> Because it's one thing. How does the human do with the dog? Uh, how does the hu how does the dog do with that human with dogs? Mm -hmm. How does it do with a different human who knows what they're doing with dogs? And right. this guy got it right. What I did with this dog, just so you know, I started walking away. 
I had um, them go away with the dogs, like away, get out of view. And then I waited for him to I, – I switched to a slip lead here. So people always all thought I was still using the prong collar, but it's a slip lead. You can see it's a slip lead. I just left the prong on the neck. Right. So what I did was the first time that I walked away with the, when the lady wasn't there, when he went to a dog like this, I just popped the leash once. And he was like, what? So the timing and the precision of it and the energy behind it was, was the right thing for that moment to get him to go, huh? And when he went, huh, I moved into his face and settled him right there. Yeah. So when he gave me like, what? That's what it means. But not in fear, more like I'm confused. What is all this? Mm -hmm. But it, it allows, and I let him sit there and let it marinate because I let him realize, oh, yeah, this makes sense to me as a dog. This is what another dog would have done to me. I don't know why this is clicking. It is because it's instinctually makes sense to surrender to an energy like that for a dog. Mm -hmm. So that's all I did with him. So with that, And that's what I just wanted him to say. When I look at a dog like that, that happens. And then when I feel that sensation, what do I do with it? So you'll see, and then I just repeat it here when we get near the dog. So he's look at look at the body language, how close we got. Here, I'm gonna show you. As I'm still holding the, look at I'm just keeping my finger pointed like this until it works. <laughs> but look at look at the um, look at him, looking around. There's no fixation on the dog's ears, back. Right. It's more natural right here. Pop on the leash. I pull up, so I so and I snap my fingers there, but that's my habit, because I came. <laughs> like snap and something with it so so i'm so i'm doing the sensation in ears like, huh? right that? so then in the future it's like that like stops right. so here i did the thing and then now i'm pulling up on the leash and just showing because before i pulled up on the leash i held low level pressure put the butt down to relax so then once he starts going down i'm like reducing the pressure on the leash let's see if you can see it here so i'm putting pressure as soon as he goes down, watch my like wrist. See it mm -hmm. drop? See my fingers? As soon as he gets down, whoop, right at that timing. So I'm showing him what I want you to do when you get to these dogs. Don't go to this to look at them. I want you to stop and sit down and pay attention to me. And just wait for your next direction. And look at, look at these guys because these guys know me and I've worked with them. So look, the trust in these guys, look at how they feel about it with me doing it they're like ah i trust steve as leader i know this guy he's going to keep us safe from this uh, this energy right. and by the way they're also seeing the roddy now in a totally different state of mind yeah. so now the dog is totally different to them right so they're they feel more trusting of the roddy now because because of but what changed my energy crosby's one of our uh, camp dogs too yes yeah, yeah. he comes <laughs> Uh huh. And so he's feeling good about it here. So now we do positive reinforcement. So right. what am I rewarding here for body and mind? I'm rewarding the body sitting down calmly next. Uh, sit, okay, sitting down next to me. <laughs> I'm rewarding the mind calm follower state. That's it. Body sitting, mind calm follower. I will pet that shit all day long. Right. If he's giving me that, you're Maybe rewarding with long, affection. But, huh? You're rewarding with affection. I'm rewarding with affection. Yeah, food toy or like physical affection usually. It. But this guy is saying, I'm much, wow, okay, there's a lot happening here. And I'm saying, this is exact. So in the moment where he's processing, I'm saying, this is exactly what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Perfect. This is just what I want. This is exactly what I want. Look at how he feels that. He's looking up at me like, like, ah, oh, like, like, why didn't someone just tell me this shit? Right. You know, and I'm like, because people don't know this shit, unfortunately, dude. Like, that's why <laughs> I'm trying to teach your owner to do that. He's like, yeah, can you tell her? To fucking bike me by the way too and <laughs> yeah. like get some rules in the house and give me some sort of challenge because yeah. i'm so bored i just like want to react to dogs and the dog translator right jamie yeah yeah look back look, 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 okay So when I'm with them, and this is what everyone says when I'm with the dogs, they're like, Steve goes into his own little world with them. Mm -hmm. But to me, this shit over here, the dogs, I knew the handler has control of the dogs here. And I'm focused on how is he reacting to what's happening over here. So I'm, stu I'm like studying him, and then I'm influencing if I need to right. in those moments. So you see, I'm like doing like fingertip here, just holding the leash. And then there, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just holding with like finger. You see it, right? Just fingertips, just walking. So if right. he was to start looking at a dog, I might turn. Hey, don't do that. He's like, oh yeah, you're right. Look like at real. <laughs> All the boots. Yeah. So if a dog can do that in a 15-minute assessment, it's pretty good. 
it's a way, way huge human issue, not as much dog issue. Right. Because then hand that leash back to the human. Yeah. Right. Not to toot our own horn, but we get, we are able to do that a good amount with aggressive aggression cases, cases or quote unquote aggression. Yeah, this is what well, this talking yeah. for aggression, but he's not aggressive. Right. I mean, he can go times, to. How many times do we get clients that are like, "Oh, my dog is so bad; they're the worst," and all, and then they come for an assessment, and you're like, "Yeah, the dog's not that bad," and they're yeah. like, "Wait, yes. what?" Yeah. Yes, but we also get some that say, "Yeah, he just like did this, and it's not that bad." Like true, true the true. cases that we have right yeah. now yes. that we're here for a behavior modification. They say, "Oh That's yeah, awesome whoops, true. he does." Actually oh yeah, I forgot to tell you that have an issue with food. <laughs> right. Oh fuck! Like this is an enormous issue with right. food. That's that you awesome. Yeah, he's reactive and he's this and he's sensitive. Like, but well, this is a different level of sensitivity to touch and resource guarding and dog shit and mm-hmm. human issues and uh, you know. So, so that's the other side of what happens too. Is the mm-hmm. is the. And I wonder on those. Is is it just like I didn't even realize that was an issue? Is which I think is mostly what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why a lot of times I do assessments because I'm like the people tell me on the phone, but I was like I need to see what the dogs say. That's your interpretation of what it is. Right. But there's probably some story and and obviously your understanding of dog psychology has gotten your dog to this point. Mm-hmm. So your assessing of the dog is probably not totally correct. So I want to see what the dog is doing. Right. Based on my own thing. But even when people sometimes first reach out. Like if it's a dog with a bite history, mm-hmm. sometimes they don't always want to disclose everything. And it's like, well, we really need to know that in yeah. order to help you the best way possible. But yeah, I think I a lot of information I can't help. Right. But a lot of people are worried because well, they're help. like, oh, well, I told another trainer about this and they refused to work with me because yeah, they didn't no, want to deal with that case. Well, that's the, those are the cases that the people, oh, my dog did nip me yesterday. And they're like, I'm hearing like these trainers in Hoboken are like giving up on the clients. Like they're, 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 people paid for sessions. They started doing two sessions, three sessions in. Everything's been going better, but my dog didn't hit me in this scenario. I don't work with biting dogs. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, think we I, talked I, about I understand this last that week. too. I understand yeah. that too, but you better refund the money and and in full, in my opinion, and have someone who can help these, or else mm-hmm. you just leave them hanging kind of thing. Well, yeah. You know? I, I don't understand it. Like if someone came, I say this all the time. If someone came here and said, I'm looking for like protection work, I'd be like, I don't know. Uh, and people re- do ask for that. I want scent training. I can teach you the basics of it, but I'm not going to get him like to do a perfect mark on on uh, you know uh, gunpowder or some right. shit like service dog training too. Service dogs like yeah, I can help you with the behavior to get the dog to a better place to that to do it, but but the actual task of picking shit up and all, I don't do that. Right. And um, but I stay in my lane. You know, these people are like, oh yeah, I'll do all that. So I, I do give like a little bit of like not because like. A lot of them are taking on these cases and tell them to do the wrong shit. And it gets way worse. Right. Because the ego is well, so big. Well, you have that too. Yeah. I have what? No, not you. <laughs> Jamie's like, yeah, well, you, you're, you're like that too. Fuck you. It's <laughs> how she said it that yeah. made you think that. Yeah. No, I saw one recently. <laughs> Some attitude there. You know what's funny? Is I saw one recently. Bit. I just saw this video. Someone sent it to me. It's a, it's a guy. He shows up at an apartment building in, in New York, in Manhattan. And he goes, uh, hey, I'm, I'm Uber here for a pickup. And he goes, I'm picking, and the name is O-K-A-Y. The person's name was O-K. They must have been funny about it. He goes, she, and he goes, yeah, but uh, blah, blah, blah. He goes, he goes oh, uh, yeah, I'm picking up, okay? <laughs> like that. And the guy's like, I don't understand why you're being rude with me. And then I like right away. And the guy's like, oh, no, 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 I'm so sorry. The guy's name is O-K. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, I'm picking up, okay? Yeah. Like, and the guy's like, fuck you, dude. <laughs> Well, look at that. That's a perfect example uh-huh. of humans talking in the sa- same species in the same language within that species, and they're miscommunicating. Yes. Imagine the miscommunication that's happening with a dog where people who watched Benji when they were younger and then all of a sudden <laughs> think they know how to train dogs. Yeah. I know that dog. I watched uh, Rin Tin Tin back in the day. <laughs> You know? Yeah. <laughs> Caesar. Caesar watched Rin Tin Tin and Lassie and said, I need to come to America because everyone knows how to train dogs like that. Yeah, yeah. That's why he came. <laughs> this that's great. Yeah. Imagine Caesar coming here being like, I need to learn from Americans how to be with dogs. Right. He came and taught all Americans yeah. how to do it. Yeah. So, that was that video. Be cool. But anyway, next. Hopefully that made sense. Ask questions about that. Yeah. If you want to know. So, did, did you see the whole thing? Was we saw the shit that she was doing wrong. I explained to you what I did in that moment and then how we finished it, which is the follow through. I felt the dog was ready. If he wasn't ready, I wouldn't have brought those dogs. Mm-hmm. But I just, that's it. Well, Steve, how did you know? And how... <laughs> instincts that's like one of the things like how did the artist know how to like paint the sun that way like they just felt that that was the way you're supposed to do it right. you know that's really what well, it let is. me ask 
Good that question. So you can articulate that part. What what from seeing him can, can you tell that he wasn't that? So bad? he felt he felt just frustrated to me, and he felt like more of like a goofball kind of guy. And, and anything that you saw that you can say, just like his reaction. So the body language wise, his reaction. But some dogs will do that, like when the dogs are too far and this and mm-hmm. that. But just the way he was moving. But again, it's the energy more. Yeah. And then the body language like kind of confirms what I'm feeling about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You well, know? like you said, if he wanted to get to those dogs, yeah, he, he would. would. Have. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And how easily he was able, easy, like how easily I was able to like interrupt him when he was looking. So if some of them, if I like do that or t- or something to interrupt or bring food or whatever, and they don't care and they're like that, I'm like, yeah, this guy we gotta spend some time with. Right. Yeah, they're all different. I mean, everything's different. They're all all different, and that's why I'm trying to get everybody to understand the core of it, so then they can apply it, go from there. And like, you, you wouldn't. Dog is nervous and leads so what do i need to do about it like, you, you, know? you wouldn't think that just a leash flop would do it to him but he's he's used to just getting the pressure and just ho- like people holding yeah. him back it's a different sensation you know what i mean so like the leash and, flop uh, was then, plenty and, and the slip leads now way to the top of the neck as yeah. opposed to a prong collar low look how low that thing is on right. that right there a lot of things happening yeah, yeah. Okay. next video next next video i know you guys have a meeting after this are you guys okay yeah okay i don't know i just said yes i know he just what, what about just agrees. can you say jamie <laughs> Yeah, yeah we good. could do the next video. Oh yeah. We'll just play this one. Okay. Do you understand? <laughs> no, you don't. Because that's, you that's don't? a human and that's a human talking, by the way. Look at this shit. So I posted this video of just one scene of it. First of all, look at the mon- so I'm I don't all right, pause this shit. <laughs> I don't understand monkey psychology. I really don't. Yeah. I don't understand or chimpanzee psychology or whatever. Mm-hmm. But it's obvious to me, not understanding uh, energy first and then body language that are not that far away from a chimpanzee. I was gonna say like genetically. So, so you can see this the the monkey. First of all, don't put a f- like the human. Is, someone pointed this out, and I didn't even think of it when I posted the video. They were like, you know, super dramatic by the way, but they were like overreacting. They're like. Chimpanzee and the anyone see the overalls? This is animal abuse with exclamations. I'm like, all right. So that's let's first start with what's called an overreaction, right. which is that. <laughs> okay, number one. Number two, this video was filmed. I don't even know, but you can tell it by the quality. Of it. It's like a long ass time ago, and it's like, yeah, don't put a fucking chimpanzee in in overalls and a um a button down shirt and a bow tie holding a dog leash and holding a book or whatever the hell he's holding. I agree. You shouldn't do that, you know, <laughs> but just like, like just point that out. Be like, I, I see what the point, what you're making of this video, but maybe think about that this thing. And I'm like, and I actually said, I didn't even think about that. That's a good point. That you didn't notice the clothes. No, it's always one of the, huh? You're saying you didn't notice the clothes. I wasn't really, you weren't focused I wasn't paying on attention it. or focused on, I was focused on the behavior that was happening there more than like what the dog was wearing. Right. I mean, uh, the human, the human, the, the chimpanzee was wearing. But the dog is wearing like a backpack. Yeah, I know. That's the other part of this. But let's just play this. So look at the assessing and evaluating. You can see the monkey is like, huh. So you see that's a different species, but they all assess and evaluate. So now here comes something that we have to accomplish or a problem or something we have to figure out. So what the animal does, and I was going to say natural, but this is not natural. But what the animal does is look at the environment and say, all right, so what do I, how am I going to do this? Mm -hmm. At least the chimpanzee is doing it. Dogs will do the same, do it similar. But the chimpanzee is going to have a much higher intelligence. I don't know if it's much, but it's higher. It's higher intelligence. Higher than a dog. intelligence. Yeah, without a doubt. So look, the, like they had to. Not only was this a task. I don't know what the fuck this video <laughs> is, by the way, but or what the like the context of this thing yeah. is. But was it necessary to dress the monkey up the whole way? Was it necessary <laughs> to put the dog to cross the river? Sh- stream thing uh, <laughs> yeah. was it necessary to <laughs> make him carry a bag or a book or whatever the hell the monkeys got ca- you know so, so he comes out look at this look, look, look. So that's it comes back and let's, let me assess this mm-hmm. shit the dog's assessing too he's like, so he's thinking about going because look there's probably the way that dog was looking there there's probably somebody he knows or something on the other side yeah mm. encouraging because i can see the way he's looking he's thinking about it that he likely wouldn't be thinking about going over that shit unless there was something like encouraging him from the other side. This right. monkey cracks me up to look. He t- takes a seat on the <laughs> on the step. That's I would love that, to hear that's like that's what they're doing. That's your thinking face too. Yeah, no, this one. <laughs> no, the monkey. I was gonna say. Yeah. So this is how. Yeah, look. So this was how Maddie and I started our <laughs> training journey. <laughs> 
was like, we back in the day, walk. he used to this wear overalls. Yeah, this is how I learned about backpacks. <laughs> this is how we taught her to swim. That's Maddie in there, by the way. Yeah. I was still learning to walk properly. So look, so the monkey says, "All right, I'm all right. If we're here now, let's break down this step. What do we do next?" Mm -hmm. Okay, so he, he, you can see, he put the foot down. He's like so testing cool. how's it feel like. The monkey's. I mean, the dog is looking at someone over there. It's honestly so cool to see the monkey. Like, but look at how, like the the monkey says, "All right, I'm going." Right. And how the dog says, "Well, I guess I'm following." Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no hesitation. There's no. I mean, there is hesitation, but it's not a hesitation of like, like you see the monkey. He's like, he's not like, I'm really worried about these this thing. He's like figuring it out. So what am I gonna do here? That's yeah. like what I'm doing when when like I'm walking with Tita, right? And, sh and she's been react. She had been react. Here comes these dogs walking. Okay. What's my, how is she feeling? Let's see, what's my plan here? How am I going to do this? Right. So it's kind of like what the monkey's doing there. So here's like all these bricks and shit in the water, and I got to get over there. I got this dog with me. How the fuck am I going to do this? All right, well, this thing feels good. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start moving forward. And the dog's like, eh, I'll follow. Sorry. <laughs> he raises his right yeah, hand he's to, here at the yeah, same right time. There. The dog's just following. And he's following. The dog is following, in my opinion, because the monkey knows what he's doing. And he's just going for it. But look, I, okay. Can I don't know if you guys could see the dirt right here. Let's go down there. There's a little bit of concern in the puppy, so he's going. But but there's a little bit of like, okay, okay, okay. Can you see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys yeah. can see it, but he he seems a little bit like he's doing it. Like, but I'm he's, doing it. All right. But this is a lot. It. This is a lot. You know. Okay, we're doing okay so far. Everything's going well. Puppy <laughs> felt the ground, the the water there. Next one. So the monkey's like, can I make this jump? Am I gonna like get there? Look at him figuring it out. <laughs> <laughs> There's Adam. <laughs> There's Adam taking the, the with his camera. <laughs> Being a creep. Yeah. This is a good shot. I think this is a good shot. Now now Steve, do you okay, we'll we'll wait for this part, but yeah. do you remember what Caesar says about this video? No. There's a reason why he shows this one. That? Yeah, what does that say? Yeah. <laughs> Danger. So he goes for it. I'm gone. Boom. So look at so the dog so the mon this is this is the, the, the monkey, we're going, the dog, we ain't going. No. So this is by the way, go walk around New York City and you see this about yeah, yeah, yeah. um forty two times mm -hmm. on a walk with with humans and their dogs. The dog wants to go one way, the human the other way. But the monkey is not feeling weird, in my opinion. I don't know, again, monkey psychology, but the, the chimpanzee is definitely feeling like you're coming this way. There's no hesitation. One way or another, you're coming. So he's got tension on, and he's not – listen, the, 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 the monkey obviously doesn't know leash technique and all that, but he knows that I'm not letting you go backwards. I just want to see – look, look look at this part. Oh, my God. For a I thought he actually just jumped backwards. Hey, man. <laughs> to go get him? Yeah. Look at look – Like, at, we're going to redo this. Like, kind of like not – expecting that watch he's kind of just kind of sitting there does that yeah and dog's like hold on hold on hold on so look and right in this moment what? right yeah. in this moment is when people stop oh he doesn't want to go mm -hmm. he's nervous he doesn't feel good it's okay baby it's okay puppy and the dog's like yeah so you just confirmed to me that this is an issue right mm -hmm. as opposed to not letting them sit there and let it marinate and create this whole thing about it to just get him through this thing and realize he can do it because he this is okay this is most humans. I'll never make money. I can never do this career. I can never be this good in this sport. I'm not this. I can never do it. And this is like the higher, lower self, mm -hmm. higher self saying, yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can do this. You can create the best dog place in the world. You can right. do that. Uh, you know what I mean? That's, That's what along, is. along the lines of what Caesar that uses his video for. That was a good analogy, by the way, everybody. Just in case. <laughs> he copied I thought they're all good. <laughs> but look, pull, 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 pull. So the puppy resistance, 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 resistance. I look at what? Hold on, hold on. Body mechanic. Where do you? Yeah. What's the difference between this dog? I mean, this dog, this chimpanzee versus the human we saw last. Look mm -hmm. at where he's he's trying to go. Angle his body. Yeah. This way. Yeah. Right. See it? So he's keeping pressure, keeping pressure, keeping pressure. Puppy's like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't, come on. Yeah, you can, bro. Come on, we gotta go. This monkey's the best. I swear. Perfect body mechanics. Look, pressure. You're coming, dude. Uh, all of a sudden, pressure, pressure, pressure. And the puppy says, well, I'm going to try. Boom. <laughs> and then he did it. Yeah. Right. Celebrate. You know what I'm saying? Slow-mo. Look at the leash pressure. It came off. 
So that's loose pressure, loose pressure. Leash. Come on, you're coming. And then as soon as he comes, this is what I would be doing. Like, hey, mm-hmm. oh, he came into the pool. Pressure off the leash. Right. As soon as he came. And then once he's in over here, no pressure. Right. The pressure free zone and it felt way better over here. And I accomplished it. And I could hear me. He barely did it, by the way. Can we hire that monkey? Can that guy, whoever, who can Adam, who was looking in the corner like this, make it any more challenging? <laughs> yeah. Bro. I don't know what they were trying to do here. This is interesting. But what did, what yeah, did Caesar know. say? I, can't, I don't remember. Caesar said something along the lines of what you said, which is, wait, um, is it's commitment basically. It's like wh- when you commit to something, you're yeah. gonna get it done. And that monkey was committed mm-hmm. to to getting across that freaking river, okay. and he and he accomplished it because he did not let go of the pressure of the dog. He's like, no, we're going this yes. way. Right. Yeah, commitment, and that's that's a, that's a really good one. And, and it's it's something that I've been talking about lately, which is like once you fully and I, you know why I thought about this. It's not the best example because Colin McGregor lost the fight that he was just in, but he said that they were asking him, how are you able to train the way you do with all this training that you do and all this? It's a lot of, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot. How do you handle it? He goes, once you fully commit to something, it makes it so much easier. So I started started thinking about that and I said, you know, why is it that when I talk to the public and I tell them what I'm doing, right? And the, the hours and the days and what we have going on and all this stuff. That people are like, wow, it's a lot. I don't know how you do it, and this and that. And to me, it's like it's confusing to me. I'm like, why? What do you mean? Like, this is it's not that bad. But yeah, it's it's challenging, but what's the big deal? Like, the the, the thing is, is I've I fully committed to this shit. So That's true. I, and, and I've and I've like went forward in time and said, where do I want to go? What does it look like? How is it going to be to get there? And what am I going to feel like? And then it's going to take this shit to get there. Mm-hmm. So here's the cost. So, and, and from this position right now, I said, deal, sign the contracts. We're good. <laughs> right. It costs this and I get this right. Fair. I'm going to do it. So then when I'm doing it and it's like, Hey, um, this thing isn't working out the way we planned. I knew that that's in the contract. I know. Right. Yeah. You're going to be thinking that some every once in a while, is this company even going to stay alive due to this situation that happened? Uh, sign initial there. Yeah. No problem. You know? <laughs> Are you going to add enough cash flow to the coronavirus? Losing mm-hmm. that? It's going to be very challenging. You're going to have to fucking pivot and make some moves. All right, deal. Mm-hmm. But most people, like, they get into this thing. I'm going to be a business owner, right? And then they're like, hey, you're going to be dealing with tremendous adversity. Oh, uh, wait, wait, wait. We didn't talk about that. I, I don't know where I I'm, signed yeah. off on that. I'm talking about financial freedom. And we're saying, yeah, I know. We're talking about the same thing. Right. I'm talking about what it costs to get that. I want to be f- totally fulfilled and, and live my passion and have my passion be my career. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is what it costs. This is what you do. You have to monetize it. That seems like a lot. I don't know if I want to make that deal. <laughs> then, 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 the, then you get why I talk about it. 95% of businesses fail in 10 years. And that's, mm-hmm. by the way, 95%. And the 5%, the one out of 20 that stayed was, uh, is not even, doesn't even have to be profitable. Right. They're just, they just haven't closed. closed the fucking doors. Right. And that was happening prior to corona what, what are the, the fuck are you now? think is happening oh my god so you want to get in that that's what i'm saying understand you want to get a dog do you know what goes with it be very clear about that right. and understand what comes with that wow this is a lot of work the people who tell us like well we didn't realize how much work it was going to be right. that's something you should have looked at right we don't know if we have that kind of time i'm going to start the business well but i want my weekends and i want mm, that's not that there there's no clause in there about that right you know I want to have my nights. I want to have my happy hours. I want to play fantasy football. I want to, you know, uh, go have um, brunch with my girlfriends. And uh, like, no. it's a lack of commitment. And people, people also so they're don't... not committed. That's my point. And, but you have to make that agreement to be committed. Yes. So I agree that I will do whatever the fuck it takes to get there. Mm-hmm. And fine, then uh, well, let's do it. In order to get a big re- uh, reward, you have to risk. Yeah. You know. Of course. So like, and not to mention the the adver- This is what we were talking about. The adversity that you deal with where while it can be perceived as this sucks and I can't believe this, it actually builds resiliency. So then when the yeah. next adversity comes, man, eh, whatever. That's Take a good thing like they're doing in the gym. They go work out, they deal with some adversity. Wow, I'm getting really tired, but then then the body adjusts mm-hmm. and gets stronger. So let, let me let me share with you like guys. Just, uh, you're just doing it for the mind. Uh, um, a quick thing about skateboarding back in the day. People people that were like less committed to like jumping off some stairs for instance they would roll up to the stairs and like stop and fall no they would roll up and stop <laughs> yeah. and then watch and then be like uh i could do this they go back and they stop 
those people that stopped it took them a long time to do it. And when they finally did it, they wouldn't land it because yeah. they would just go like not it's half commitment, you know. Right. They didn't really want to do were it. Hesitating. Hesitating. Me, me, and some everybody else that was committed to jumping off those stairs, you wouldn't even stop. You would just go. And if you and if you fell, all good. Get back up and do it again. Yeah. But if you kept stopping and like looking at the danger, yeah, because the beginning and was all fucked up too. From the beginning, they were yeah, fucked up. You weren't committed, so you that's why committed. it's so difficult to go do it. Yes. Yeah. So just go for it. Yeah. Whatever it is that you want to do, just go for it. And if you Pain fall, it's like, okay. Just, just fucking do it. Just, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's like, like do Nike. it. Like Nike. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just do it. Why? Why are you shaking your head? Is that not? <laughs> oh, my God. Not, Seriously, not so zero. cheesy. Yeah, yeah. Slogan? Cheese ball. Am no. I wrong? Am I wrong? Just do it. No, it's true. <laughs> just do it. It's a great it's, – it's you talk about a company who came up with – I mean, you want to talk about branding and you want to talk about things like that, like three words, just do it with a period. Mm -hmm. That's their slogan. And uh, scribbled line is their logo. Scribbled. And you scribbled. know how many people talk about I believe about it's called it? a swoosh. Whatever. <laughs> oh, my God. You know how people talk about you want to go just work you know for Nike? How long people take to come up with a fucking logo for their business? And they're all procrastinating. It's, a, it's just another form of procrastination of not being able to say, like, I want to make this agreement. You, 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 there's been people that I that I talk with. I'm like, have you, so have you made your website yet? No, still working on it. So you're just procrastinating, just so you understand. Call your call your thing like I don't know, Apple Pencil Dog Training. That doesn't make a fucking difference. They called it Nike, N I K E. What the hell does that even mean? What does oh, that I'm sure it has mean? some meaning. What? What do you think the meaning is? She's like, I'm sure it has some meaning. I'm sure but it has some point, meaning. But the point is you don't know what the meaning is. And I most don't people know. Don't, and most people on the planet don't know what Nike is yeah. or it right. stands for or what it is, but they know it means just do it in athletics. That's what they think. You know, if I wear these shoes, I'll run faster. That's what they right. created. Yeah, they've built they that brand. They athletes and all that shit. But that's branding. So I want this brand to equal trust. I want you to feel like we're going to be committed to you. I want you to feel like uh, you're a friend who we're helping. I want to make sure that you feel safe. Um when you're with us that you can share and be vulnerable. I want that's all that shit there. I want to represent giving to people, um, improvement, progress. I want that to represent that. Mm -hmm. That's what that logo should represent. And a uh, very, very high quality of, of standards. Yeah. Cause I, I tell people, you hear me say it around here when I get crazy a little bit, when one little thing is off <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> when I, one little thing is off, I, I say, that was I say, do we want to be like the Apple or do we want to be like, I don't know, some shittier company? That's true. Logitech. I don't know, is, that, <laughs> where, is that worse? Yeah, it is. Okay. Like, like the, the, these are all, my point is these are all like good brands, but the point is, is like, do I want to be like, when I go to the, when I say I got to get a computer, am I thinking, do I need to get an Apple or am I thinking I need to get, you know, whatever. I want them to be seeing us like that, but not because um, we charge the most or any of that shit. No, we don't charge the most, by the way, but I want it to be where people feel like, ah, oh, with them, we're going to be good. We're going right. to feel good. It makes me feel good. That looks like feeling good. I feel trusting. I feel respected. I feel like they care about me. They're going to be there with me to the end. All that shit. Yeah. Right. So that's like building a brand. Uh, and this is me like throwing in some business advice to people too and things, you know, along the line that I've just, that have worked and that what I've learned over time that, like, oh, shit, that's a good little nugget that I never even thought about in business, you know? Right. Things I learned a bit from Tony Robbins or whoever, like, when it comes to shit like that. You learn a lot from the dog and the animal world, and they could apply to business. It can apply oh to my God. Business life Business and dog general. psychology is so similar. Yeah. There's so it's many good. things. Like, I, t I talk with that. I don't even know how I did it. It was the day. I think it was the day after Maddie passed when I went and talked you with talk that. With who? Um, I did a speech with that finance company in, in the city, the capital company. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it was, like, on their lunch. Everybody came into this big conference room. And I was explaining about dogs and their psychology, how it relates to business. And everyone was like, wow, shit. They were so, like, engaged by the whole thing. Because I'm like, you know, I'm basically this guy. And it was like the CEO standing here. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's what I am. You guys are all the rest of the pack. And you all have different places, but you're all extremely important to this whole, this whole pack, this whole business. Right. You know, they're like, oh, fuck, yeah. And I was like, and things are going to change throughout time. There's going to be disagreements. There's going to be a scuffle with the dogs. They're, they won't always pay attention. Someone's going to be late. But how does the leader handle that? How does the CEO deal with it? Mm -hmm. Did that person understand? Did they grow from it? And by the way, the firing is when that the dogs say, bro, you're too anxious. Out of the back. Yeah. Or we kill you. That's old, primal days. Obviously, we're not going to do any of those. <laughs> but that's how they deal with it. It's so relatable. That's the way life is, and people don't want to deal with it. They want to think of the sunshine and rainbows, and and to be these people who are helicopter mommy the kids and not letting them feel any adversity and keeping them in this bubble, and then they get hit with the real world. And I'll tell you from being in this thing, like I know we're all in it, but I'm talking about even the business.
business world and dealing with banks and lawyers and other business owners and these people, this shit is cutthroat as fuck. Mm -hmm. They don't have time. That's what I'm saying. They don't have time for your feelings. I would love to be like, hey, this is a really sweet, kind, beautiful world. But there's someone always around the corner who's got like, how can I cut that guy's Achilles right there mm -hmm. and, and get again, surpass. It's the world we live in. It's just the way it goes. So just, you know, you can either fight it and deny what is or accept what is. And then what can I do about it? Right. You know, it's like I accept my dog is fucked up. Well, what do I need to do about it? Mm -hmm. Instead of dwelling in the past. Well, why is it like this? I don't know. Spend the next two hours. Then when you're done with all this bullshit, now we're back to the same spot that we're <laughs> yeah. in. Hopefully better because now you realize what we have to do. You know, is there any other stuff we have? Or that intro for that? We had one. Yeah. We yeah. Have. The, yes. the, the dog park on one. The I hope people like the dog park one. I know that I there was like mad warnings in that thing from that yeah. dog and a lot of shit happening there yeah. that seemed just like a video of a lot of happened bratty, in three minutes. Yeah, a bratty husky who's just humping a dog and there was a scuffle. Well, right. yeah, but there's did you see all the signs of it? <laughs> so I'm trying to give you guys a, a look into my mind or <clears throat> Caesar or like what you know the people like us are doing when we're looking at the dogs. What our trainers are doing, our colleagues are doing who know this stuff is what they're seeing. And I remember being like, with, I remember that when I went to TCW the first time. There was something that happened in the dog park, and Caesar's like, "Watch that," and I'm like, "What the hell is he saying?" What I didn't, watch I missed what? it. I'm like, "Watch what?" He's like, "Be careful with that one." And I'm like, "Looking at the dog, I'm like, I don't know. He looks fine to me, but that was when I was much more green and didn't right. see this stuff. And that's how I really started knowing I was like seeing things way better because this is what I do. You go to LA, we do the workshop for a week, two weeks, whatever it is, and then come home, and now I'm dealing with my dogs, the clients, the rescues, the shelters, and all that for you know month, two months, come back. Uh, Monday, month to month, come back. So what would happen each time is is once you understand the core of the, the dog psychology thing, now you're learning like the you, – now you're in like the um, – what do you call them? Like the master's classes or like the doctorate classes where it's like – so now that we understand how to do surgery, right. now what when you see that the heart looks like this on heart surgery, we want to – like put this – line. now we're getting to way more of the details and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I would go back there and how I knew I was going to be – I was like – like. So did you see that? And I'm like, yeah, I did see that. Yeah. Fuck. So now I'm getting onto his. All right. And I'm like, in my mind, I'll be watching it. This is the thing too of detail. Okay. So how the learning should never stop. I've been doing this for a long time, but I'm still there and I find it. This is no shit talking to any of the people who go, the volunteers, the trainers, anybody. And I'm not going to name names or anything, but I see sometimes the people go there and it's a, it's a gathering. It's more of a right, social, right. social event. No, I agree with this that. And that. Yeah. And I, and I agree, and I, I like doing that, but I do that at the time. But when Caesar's talking, mark my words, if you ever go to a TCW, look for me, and you'll see what I'm doing. I'm either with you my notepad, notepad or I'm, like, zeroed in listening. Because that's, to me, like, the that, that's the legend speaking. And I want to fucking hear Even what though it's the say. same information that he may be giving, I'm sure you're still learning. Same, but it's also in a different, different way. It's a different right. dog. It's a different client. It might be a new thing that he said, not in this scenario, or a, or a little thing like that in mm -hmm. his 40 years of experience that in my 12, I didn't see. Right. Or I haven't learned just yet, you know? So that's why I'm, I'm studying and all that stuff. So the continued learning mm -hmm. that's feeding the brain. That's what goes into what I was talking about when you're learning – it gives you things oh, I can uh, it gives you the ability to believe new things, which then gives you the ability to take different action and do different stuff, you know. So the learning always has to be learn something new every day. Um, do something that you've already learned that that can help you grow a little bit that day in the progress part. But yeah, it's one of my favorite things to do is watch. And then the train everyone. Let me get your notes. Let me get your notes. <laughs> Fuck you, your notes. Get your own notes, dude. You were sitting here the whole time. You and you know what's chose, probably You just chose funny. whoever to go talk to your girl at home, or you just chose to fucking do whatever the hell, or I don't know, whatever you're doing. Like, you just chose to just fuck off and have a bullshit conversation outside mm -hmm. while Caesar was explaining about that dog with the bird there and the prey drive and the dance. Fuck. But whatever. And why do I feel like that, when you were in school, a, you were that one? Oh, <laughs> my God. Like, hey, give me your notes. I wasn't even <laughs> give me the notes. I was in. He would steal them. He would beat them up. Give me and... your test so I can just copy the answers and give it yeah. back. You right. were that guy in school that was trying to, like, cheat off of me. Yeah. Like, let me see your test. But then again, those are things that I wasn't interested in. I, I was like, you were the one that let him cheat off of you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Depends. Yeah, she was. She was definitely the type. Yeah. <laughs> Without a doubt. Like, give me the fucking answer. Come on, Time. Not always. <laughs> Not always, sometimes. she yeah. said. No, but sometimes I'll admit it. No, but it was something when I wanted to learn it. I actually, like, even at Pace, when I went to Pace, there was a couple business classes that, like, I was definitely under the mindset of, like, how is this guy teaching me about business if he's in a class classroom? Right. Mm -hmm. 
so he knows the theory of it. So I would be like, hard, but I was actually interested in a lot of that stuff. So those classes, I'd be more engaged, but I would ask more questions and like, but how do you know that? And what happens if this? Right. And you could see them get like, ah. Like, but it could be somebody who owned a business that was just it could be. On no, the it side. could be. It could be. But that was, I'm saying what my mindset was at the time, you know. And if their business was that good, would they really be teaching in a school? Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe yes. Maybe that's what they do and that's what they enjoy. So. But I'm just saying what my my uh, like ignorant mindset was back then, <laughs> which was just like, fuck this guy. You, you can be really guys taking me away from my from my my wiffle ball game with the baseball team that we have planned at, at noon and my case of Bud Lights. Yeah. You know, for real, that's what it was. I Great was like, mindset. Yeah. yeah. You could be really good at something if you're able to teach it. Like huh? now you can be really good at something if you're able to teach it. Like if you're able to teach something and it shows the mastery in that thing. Yeah. Now you're getting better with teaching people how, like what it is yeah. that you're seeing. Yeah. yeah. And teaching everything. is a big, big part yeah. of it for sure. I like it. I enjoy it. Like even with this, like showing you how to do certain well, things. It's true because yes. technology wise. Yeah. And, because yeah. that's, that's something that I tell people like there's, there's many dog people out there who are excellent with dogs, but they're not very good with people mm-hmm. or they're not very good of showing another human how to get the same result that they're doing. Cause they might not even realize what they're doing. Right. They're just more like instinctual or yeah. they know it and they're like, yeah, I know all this, but how do I like convey the message? Like what you say about Gretzky? Yeah. Like Gretzky was like the, the best, best hockey player of all time. And then not, and then hasn't been the greatest coach. Well, or at least like the records show yeah. that he mm-hmm. hasn't been, he might be even just been shitty teams, but it just seems like he wasn't <laughs> the best at coaching, you know, but that's a very different skill set to that. That's, that's all right. I know how to be um, your top performer salesperson but I don't know how to be the CEO of this company. Right. So he was the highest performer of all, of all the employees, but he didn't know how to run the fucking company. That's a big different story. It's a big, you know, totally different. So those are two different skill sets. So me being able to take Nico and do all this cool shit with him is one thing, but me being dogs and then show them how to get to the steps of doing that. It's totally different. It's very different. Yep. That's why I like that it's been, it's just nonstop learning and going over because it's, it's like this gradual learning and getting better at everything. Versus like trying to do it all at once and it didn't work. You know, that's where it comes into the anxiety and the patience. And yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. So remember what I said at the beginning of this thing, how long you're spending on here, like come on and watch a full podcast. Mm-hmm. Well, it doesn't have to be ours, but if you want to, but, <laughs> but watch, doesn't hurt. if you're watching it this long, like you spent your brain of saying, I'm going to watch this through mm-hmm. this video. I've, I've, I've made the decision. I want to watch this video and watch all they do as opposed to, like boom, boom, boom. Next thing, next thing, next thing, next Ooh. thing. Who said this? Swingy. Who liked my comment? Who did this? Who did that? The brain's going, do, 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 do. and then okay, it's the ball going yeah. across the and screen. Then, yeah, and then it's I want to go out. Why are we doing this? When's it? Is the dog out? Is this guys? Bleh. That's what their life becomes. Good luck running a business that way. You're gonna go under. You're gonna be the ninety-five percent guaranteed. Mm-hmm. How your have you your been odds doing? are already fucked up going into this thing. <laughs> have you been doing lately with that? With um, uh, consuming content good uh good Good better now that you're aware more aware but i'm aware when i get stupid like i like i realize uh uh, i'm I'm aware when i get stupid. yeah if i get stupid like you be aware stupid and what i mean by get (laughs) stupid is when i get stuck in unconscious behavior yeah so um i i the the time that i get stuck in unconscious is much shorter now so Mm -hmm. for instance like if I'm watching, you know, let's just say I'm doing the comments on something and then I'm like, all right, I just finished that comment. And then for some reason I'm on the feed and then your monkey brain that's, kicks in that, that's sub, yeah, con- yeah. Subconsciously don't talk about that shit. That monkey's going to fuck you up for that. Your monkey brain Yeah, <laughs> to, to let me like subconsciously, I click the, uh, feed page yeah. mm-hmm. and then subconsciously I just started scrolling yeah. and then subconsciously I just started reading comments and then so, subcon- but now my point is, is that my conscious, Hey, you're doing that thing again. Oh yeah, and then that's difficult of off, which feels painful at times to do it because the habit's not there. The habit is to continue scrolling. So you do right. exactly what I do. You what? almost throw your fucking phone. Like I just at times, it off. I just, I just like the way that you set it down from, though was definitely like off. But I do that at times where I'm just like, you know what? I need to. This is not. But that's also good. allowing the throw body to hear it more. By maybe yeah. no, I'm not doing this. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's like, hey, time to work out. Oh, I need to scroll and see what happened on. The- no, you don't, dude. Yeah. Turn the phone off and go work out. But, 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 I need to and, take and, a shower, but I'm gonna go on YouTube. Right, <laughs> there's subconscious behavior that was taught by mommy and daddy, most likely, or whoever got you there. If you if you procrastinate, it's likely that someone in your life procrastinates. If you're anxious, likely someone in your life procrastinated, and likely during imprint period, mm-hmm. you just have to find out who it was, and then that gives you more clarity of what it was, and then you can understand. Oh, I understand it now. Now I can do something about it. You know. 
Yeah, whatever. I, I just think that people have to explore that. But then this is, again, comes down to the same shit that I keep saying overall that, okay, this is what it costs to do this, to, to get to get uh, brain, to form new habits. Well, that costs a lot, and this is the work, and I don't want to do all that. Then don't fucking do it, and don't expect the results. Just don't right, expect don't the results. Do I do it with my client, the clients now, and you guys know this. They come and they say, well, I'm not, I'm not letting the dog get out of – like, I know you're saying all these things and I hear you, but my dog will be sleeping with me in bed. I say, I, I'm not here to argue or try to like convince you of anything. I'm just going to tell you your results have now just went to this. Mm -hmm. If you're okay. But why do they have, then, then it gets into, then it, then it tells me, by the way, that somewhere along the line, no one taught them about authority. Damn. Where they question everything. Like you should mm -hmm. question things. But when it's something, when you're asking someone who's well, an there's expert, a healthy way of questioning. Well, yeah, and and can you explain? Would you mind explaining to me why having him out of the bed would result in less mm -hmm. kind of thing? And and can you explain why the what about the bed is a thing? Like that's a questioning, like questioning. I want to understand, but questioning of I disagree is like why does that matter towards this mm -hmm. with like tension, you know? Like why would that because of this isn't this, and they're like. Well, I, don't, I mean, I'm just going to emotionally keep this dog in the bed. Okay. Just understand that this right. is where it's going to go. You know? Yeah. Don't expect to have the Hey, I'm going to start a business and I will be going out every weekend and drinking and partying with my friends. Okay. Your business is likely going to fail. Right. Well, why? This is not fair. I'm going to be in, in beach body shape by June. But uh, just so you know, I will not be removing milkshakes and I will be having candy in between all my meals mm -hmm. and I drink beer at night, every night. Okay, you won't be getting in shape. That's not fair. Why? That's hard. That th I know. Someone should have taught you about fucking authority and and, and what things are. Mm -hmm. You know, authority I don't like or what discipline. Is. Huh? In that. Both authority both. or discipline? Uh, yeah, authority is more. All right, authority is more. In my opinion, like they never got someone in their life to tell them to teach them about discipline. Yeah. Essentially, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. or teach or 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 about authority, which yeah. is like you need to go do this. Why? Because I know it's better for you. You're a young kid. You're right. six, six years old. You need to go to your room. That's what I said. And the parents who scream and yell and don't follow through are the ones who develop the children who grew up and they say, hey, I need you here at this time. The boss says of the company, why? What? And, and what? I have to do all that. I don't want to do all that. And they allow all this bullshit. So it's discipline and authority there yeah. in, in one. It's both for yeah. sure. But I think that's a big one too. That gets into back what we talk about when it comes to authority too. The – the whole parenting thing and the forgiveness and all that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a whole nother thing. Yes. And I think that there's a lot of people who are now rate. Th this is what's happening in my opinion. Again, <laughs> there's a lot of these people are growing up nowadays in this much softer way of being raised, like not being held accountable, poor little baby. They're doing it with dogs, not too, but it's going with children too. And then these kids are, and they're keeping them in a bubble, spoiling them, letting them live, and because they wanted them to be part of that generation for sure. Sure, mm -hmm. it's like my parents did it, and they're not doing it with bad intention. It's a good intention. Yeah. I want to give my kids a better life than me. Right. Okay, but how are you going to create most that? Of the intention. Because they can create it. The intent, look, intention, and what happens, right? So the intention. I want to create a better life for my kids. So what I'm going to do, my strategy. I want to have a better walk with my dog. Right. Mm -hmm. I want to have a better life for my kid. So what I'm going to do, my strategy is I'm going to shelter them from all adversity. I'm going to spoil them to the kid, right? I'm going to, fuck you, mom. Uh, it's okay, honey. Don't worry, right? So not teaching them about that type of behavior towards an authority figure is major consequence right? in the real world. So then that kid's left to feel confused. So they actually created a worse life. Financially, they might, it might seem that the kid has a better life. Right, but it made the parent feel good. Yeah, uh, they, they think that it's th they're doing a good job. Right. But it's not going to make them feel good when the kid grows up to be a fucking mess. Not then, no. So, yeah, that's what's happening. It's the same thing with the dog. My intention is to do this. My intention is to do this with the kid. But you then know, the result also, is baby. And then what's the – I mean, the, the action is this. What's the result? But life, Spoiled kid who has a meltdown when somebody says anything about them or asks them to do something or mm -hmm. an owner says With this. the times, everything gets easier though, yeah. right? So what we have to do when we become parents is simulate. Yeah, tough times, so mm -hmm. that they can learn about the tough times and be like, okay, you know what I'm saying by that? Yeah, it's like it's you create it's, it. It's it's. Do you want to go into the world like this is what I do, right? Put it them is, in martial arts or put them into shit that's going to challenge them. To yes, make them so that's what I'm saying. More it's resilient. Like, or, for instance, do I want to go into a scenario, um, not practiced, and there's some stimulus that causes me to react in a certain way, right? 
And so that's a, that. So now I've let the environment decide a stress, mm-hmm. right? So now I'm up to left to this thing. I'm vulnerable to some situation happening that can cr- re- like create uh, stress in me. Yeah. So I'm like, at, like sitting here like this. So I'm not, I'm just in fight flight as opposed to like with the breath work thing, or those are just two examples or working out. Those are three examples of making a decision consciously to say, I'm going to go into stress. I'm going to stress my muscles. I'm going to stress my lungs and breathing, right? I'm going to, what was the other example I said? Oh, I'm going to stress and send my body into stress with the cold. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to practice not overreacting. I'm going to practice myself staying calm in this situation. So now in that scenario, I've made the decision to go into stress and to practice getting better at dealing with the stress. Right. So it's good fucking stress, right? But most humans are not doing that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then they go. They're in, avoiding stress. They're avoiding it. Right. And the body's made to be stressed, by the way, mm-hmm. and be challenged and work. So now when you go out and it's like the body's like, damn, we haven't been stressed in any way. It's all comfort right. up to this point. Uh, oh, my God, there's traffic. I love that one. It's like it's like there's traffic. <gasps> so, th- so back in the day, it was, my God, there's a bear. We need to survive. Now right. it's, oh, my God, there's cars on the street that's not going to get us to our destination as quickly as we wanted. It's almost and like that's a, a big danger. You have a surplus of adrenaline almost. Like huh? you have a surplus of adrenaline. Like you don't, you get, out, you don't, you, you don't get out adrenaline normally within our, our lives because we don't have anything to like release that with necessarily. Like you live in comfort zone. Yeah, because we live yeah. in comfort zone. We're not in danger. Well, stress, I mean, yeah, adrenaline, but, but all, cortisol. How do cortisol, all these right. levels of, mm-hmm. of all the hormones so we're, that, we're that, retaining are, it. That, are, that are associated with, with stress, yes. stressful experience. We have to get that out. So that's why I'm just like, I don't want to, I'm not making, living it up to the outside. I'd rather, I'd rather like set, give my body what it's asking you know, in my mind, what it's asking in a healthy way and learning how to get better with it. So, and, and so this way, when the dog comes and tries to bite, I'm just like, this is a scenario. When the human's having a meltdown, this is a scenario. Mm-hmm. The, the, you know, the people are in pain. This is, uh, the weather's terrible. This is uh, the traffic. Okay, so how do I deal with that? It creates that. It's a long Good. podcast today. It really is. long. We have to. I think and by the way, yeah. okay, so part of the organization, and this is like the, the progress and the growing of the business too, is, me, is my schedule. So all these times I'd be on this thing, I'd be like, all right. And we had to cut a little short or whatever. And mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, guys, um, stay calm, confident, and see you later. And I'm like, I right away. I didn't realize you weren't wearing shoes, by the way. Yeah. Oh, I don't, oh I don't you're not? Shoes. Nice. <laughs> but meanwhile, meanwhile, I'm listening to like Howard Stern and how it's great that he's doing like a three or three, four hour show. But how like he they take he goes and takes a nap when he's done with yeah. his show for a while and mm-hmm. stuff. So I said, you know, if I'm gonna give this thing, uh, Steve, once Steve heard that, he's like, that's it. I'm taking yeah, a nap yeah. after Excuses. every podcast. Sleep every day, every podcast. No, but oh, it's, it's it's being able to be real about it. if I want to give a lot to this podcast, I have to adjust my schedule. Right. So we need to be more organized. So days like today when I'm doing the podcast, I'm trying not to have any consultation these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't have to run to something next. So now what I'll be doing is like I have social media today planning next podcast, uh, seeing how the team is doing with the dogs, how my boarding train case is doing, go work Nico, make sure I get my workout in, meditate, cold shower, like all that shit needs to happen on these days. Mm-hmm. So I think it's going to be much better doing it this way. It will be. Because look, the old mindset is like, no, sessions every day, work yourself into the ground, but then I get into the overworking slash overtraining. Like yes. In, in, you know, if I go – That's not good for it, ev- everyone. Look, <laughs> who's going to have bigger buys, biceps? Right? For everyone or anyone. Who's going to have bigger Everyone. biceps? I don't know if you guys know this, but who's going to have bigger biceps? The person who goes into the gym and like crushes their buys like once a week, lets it recover, does it in a, in a calculated way, way, or the guy who, who crushes his buys uh, seven days a week? Mm, I don't know. It's a tough one. If the guy who's doing it once or twice a week is going to get it because the other one's not allowing for any recovery. Your muscles so have to re- repair. They have yeah. to repair themselves. So the, the, Did you hear that? Yeah. They have to repair themselves. Of course. Yeah. So, so when you do that, you, you actually uh, build more Recovery. muscle like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so that's the same with this shit is like if I just keep going and going and going, I'm not giving my chance any, any time to just slow down and recover so I can be a more efficient at what I'm doing. Right. You know, like the trainer, the guys who fight in UFC, they don't train until five minutes before the fight. They actually take a, almost a week off of training prior to their actual fight. They right. train up to and let their body recover and they just do a light pad work. Just so they stay sharp mm-hmm. yeah. and let their body recover, so it's at its most peak. They're timing it. So the body, your body is going to recover at its peak right at fight day. Mm. You're going to be ready for it at that point. So that's what they're doing. But 
Thank you guys for another so awesome did. podcast. But that's not an excuse to not hustle. Okay. <laughs> you have to fucking hustle. It's a fine so line there. I always say the extreme action, uh, extreme action, extreme patience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, extreme hustle, extreme patience. Yeah. Same time. So, and build a company or build your career, or build your your uh, high performing skill, or build yeah whatever it is. Slowly but surely build that. Don't think you have to rush and do it, but but also take the action, learn, do the things that you need to do to get to that place. So, and stop blaming other people for your shit. <laughs> No, but just it's so true. Like, like once you start, this finger starts going here. Like, life is so much better. Yeah. Because I was this, uh, this band, mm-hmm. like, and then as soon as it was like, like, hey, it's raining, my fault. It's like, oh, uh, this one isn't my fault, <laughs> but like, I'm happy to take blame for it. Yeah. In my mind, I visualized that it was gonna rain today. You can, and that that being super powerful of a person, so I was like, I can control all these things. Versus the environment controls me. It's powerless. You're powerless. Like, Barking. That's oh true. my god! Like meltdown. Like, you sometimes, sometimes we have those. Yeah, you can control how you react to the rain. For how? sure. When yeah. it rains, you you can control how the you react. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the big one. Like, how do you? Re- uh, we we've done many videos on that. The reaction to the reaction. So the dog yeah. reacts. Right. What is your reaction to that reaction? Yep. You know, uh, your spouse fucking screams and yells at you. What's your, your response to that? Right. Uh, you did this, you know, the, the food, you get stuck in traffic, stuck in tra- you, you ordered this drink from Starbucks and it's taking forever. Mm-hmm. How do you react to that? There was the wrong milk they put in. Like how you react the, the world over. Right. <laughs> cause for some, it's like, Oh my God, here comes a cougar coming after us to kill us and eat us for lunch. When in reality it was almond milk and not coconut milk. <laughs> That's fucking USA 2021 right there. It's on the record. So my kids, grandkids, people watching this in 2021, this is the phase now where the U.S. is starting to get real mm-hmm. weak about but that shit, as mm-hmm. far as I'm concerned, mm-hmm. and, and just overall people and everything. It was funny. I, I read – this is the last thing. Yep. I yes, promise. This I is promise. the absolute last I thing. Could see, I could feel Jamie. But it was like, like something on, along yeah, the lines of like good late. times. All right, so hard – it was like this. This was – it was hard times create strong men. Um, oh, yeah. You said this yesterday. Yeah, and then it goes to like – so hard times create strong men. And then strong men create good times. Mm-hmm. And then the good times create weak men. Mm. Yep. Something along that. Something, something like that. So, but I started thinking about it. I'm like, fuck, that's the U.S. Yeah. <laughs> Some hard times. Hey, we're Britain. We're taking over your shit. And you're mm-hmm. not allowed. Oh, no, no. no. We're, we're, we're not letting you take over our whole land here. We're going out. We're going to run for And then civil war. Who's going right. to win? And then, we that's had some war. hard fucking times when you're just like, let's put – like tens of thousands of people in some field where and just run at each other yeah and start shooting and stabbing each other we haven't had war here on on our land in a long time so not hard times right yeah not, not meaning that war has to be hard times depression the, the great depression all these oh, things yeah. right so those are hard times then that created strong people through adversity and built this country right like like I just know this stuff from hearing from my grandparents and stuff, what it was like. Like They weren't thinking about anything but surviving and getting – that was a hard-ass fucking time. So then they gave our parent, my parents, our parents' generation easier times. But they still had it harder than us for sure. Yeah. And then they took the thing, but then it started slowing down there. Then my generation and now the newest one. Like things are mm-hmm. getting like – and just seeing things. And maybe this is me just getting older and being like these people are getting so weak. But it like, could like, be. My, like our parents would be to us. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, or your grandparents would be you. That, or – or is that just the truth, the way it's going? And we're just going downhill. I choose to believe that it's not what's happening. There's, a, there's like a reset happening. I was going to say, or something could, realizing, could happen. Yeah, to realizing this weak shit ain't going to fucking people. be good for our country. And we can't just like, you know, just just like be Post. good. We're just good. Like, like It's like a company that's like, like you know, uh, like Nike. We were talking about Nike. Like they're, they're the number one athletic brand in the country, in the world. Okay, and this is what, the, but now they're starting to do different things and not having as much work ethic and not, you know, delivering the same product and this and that. So now here comes Reebok or whoever, or Adidas or who, like, you know what I mean? Right. Coming to take, but if my point is, is the people who are in the, in the, the, the going up and have to deal with the shit are going to be like, yeah, this is what it's like. But the people now who are coming in up here don't know what it's like down here. And then right. they're having like a fucking meltdown about it. Is it making sense? Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. yeah, I get it. Yeah. So that, that's just my concern is so I'm just like put yourself through some adversity. But don't do poor me about it. Be like, nice, adversity. We can deal with that. That's what I'm doing with the dogs. Yes, this dog's giving me shit. Now we can actually have some growth. Right. Because you have two hours, 
two and a half hours to explain it on a podcast, you're going to be kind of like all over the place with yeah. it. But if we make a video about it, which would be really powerful video, it would be very concise. And you're going to say, create adversity in your own life so that you can be good in other areas and be calm when a certain situation happens. Yeah. Like, well, we'll, we'll make that video. Yeah, we'll something it like that. And, and, and because my point is, is that the, now the humans are becoming weaker as overall. I saw something that said that the, the male handshake – in 1980 something was an average of like i I don't know these numbers exactly but it was like 118 um psi or something or Mm -hmm. i don't know if these numbers are correct but it was something like this and the female was like 90 and they redid it in like whatever it was and then 20 years later it had flipped yeah well think about it now we haven't even shook hands in a long time well that's because of the covid but that's what i'm I'm just saying regardless of even that i'm just saying that that's what's been if that's even a true study, I don't right. know what the real thing is, but I just read it, so I'm not yeah. saying that's confirmed or that's what it really but is. But it got happening. you thinking. But it got me thinking, like, why are why are men like trying to like soften themselves up so much, mm-hmm. you know? And why are women trying to like go so high on it, right? You know? And I'm not saying that like you hear me saying it all the time. All of our almost all of our clients are female, so it's not that's a thing of portion. men better than women, women better than men. I'm just saying like who is what and be the best version of that, right? For all, I'm talking about races. Uh, male, female, dog, bit, whatever. Be the best version of what you are. Mm-hmm. You know, don't. I don't have to be. I don't have to be you. I, I want to be me. I want to be Steve. And I don't want to be I'm you. A guy, this is what I do. Yeah. Huh? I don't want to be you. No, there's something wrong with you, <laughs> that. But, but that's what it is. And it's like you know, same thing where we're doing it with 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 the races and all this stuff too. It's like, well, what's what what is inside of this? Like, mm-hmm. we're I don't know. The views are just so off, and we're. I think we're just in a society of abundance right now. And my point is the dogs are the ones suffering because of all this shit. They uh, humans getting weaker. Are. We're getting softer. We're getting more into the into technology and all these things. And dogs are suffering because of it. So what if that's like our meter of like, how are we doing as humanity? Mm-hmm. Well, how are the animals doing? I don't know. Isn't Gandhi right. said that? The greatness of a nation could be how they oh, treat their animals. Yeah. Is that Gandhi? I, I think, thought so. it was Gandhi. I think, I think we did this once at a podcast. Yeah. We did. But it's true. How are we treating the animals? You should have looked it up by now. Well, I know. I was going to say that. So, then, then yeah. Then it gets to me. Define treating animals. Because the person who showers a dog with affection, buys them every piece of clothing, lets them sleep in luxury mm-hmm. and all this stuff, but doesn't walk them. In their mind, they're giving their dog the greatest life of all time. Right. The greatest thing ever. So knowing what is also is a big factor in this whole thing. Mm-hmm. But long podcast. Very long. I have too much energy for this. Two hour and a half. Like yeah, I know. I need to start like get drinking. Hopefully that was good though. If you guys coffee. are liking no, it. No, no, no. She's like shaking in her keep there. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you guys are liking it, let us know. Whatever questions you had about it, we're ending it. Yes, we have to. We have things oh, to do. You, by the way, Howard Stern, where we got? Two hours? <laughs> Me. We have shit to do. This is two hours. He was like, are we ending it? <laughs> yeah. Two hours. Are you going to keep going? Let's just yeah, kick Jamie out. Let's just going. kick kick Jamie out. Let her go do her thing. And I don't want to keep going though if it's no, gonna no, be too no. long. So so we'll, let's just see. Is this two hours about? Two and, two and a half. half. Okay, so two and a half hours. This is probably one our longest one, no? I think about yeah. Yeah, but when I have the energy, like that's why I can't. You feel good? Like a fire. How, how do you like everything here? Like everything worked semi smoothly yeah, except for uh, way better. Uh, way Jamie's, better today. Jamie's virus style computer. Or... Yeah, besides that, it was good. <laughs> no, it was good. It was good, right? Um, I always enjoy the, the podcast. I watch them and I have fun so watching them. So another part of this too is like the sleep has been better. And like I found out recently about my uh, gluten. I was just now I've now just to add on to the list of things. I have this whole gluten sensitivity. Such a snowflake, bro. Gluten. I've been dealing with the gut for so long <laughs> trying to do that. Focus on your gut. It's a huge part of the body. It's enormous. Your diet is so fucking critical to everything you're doing. You got to be focused on that. <laughs> and I'm getting lazy to be focused. So I'm feeling better from not eating all that crap. It's, it's only good. Three, like four days that I haven't eaten gluten. Four or five days or something like that. That's good. You feel way better. That's so, awesome. and then by the way, that's what I was in that video. I was doing keto at that time. Yeah. So I was saying I was, I was really lean in that video. You were. Yeah, it was because I wasn't having the. But, but what I didn't realize, I thought it was carbs, but in reality, it was the gluten that right. I was eating that was causing the inflammation. Right. So when I removed carbs out of it, that that by default removed gluten out yeah. of it. So right. But you didn't like, know it back then. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, I was doing good, feeling great, but. Now I know laser beam, which one it is. Mm-hmm. I'm taking time. I mean, this diet thing's been going on for like years and years and yeah. years. Yeah. So that's evolved too to, to who you are and what your thing is. Like I've, I've, there's people out there who are eating only meat because that's what they can eat. That's crazy. All meat diets, carnivore mm-hmm. diet, lion diet. They I gave up meat like, for a while and I'm back on it. I feel great. It's, it's what it does to the body. So, so then you get Everyone's the, body's just different. Just so you know. Yeah. And, then, and then that's like the, the, the food world. It's just like the dog world. <laughs> Vegan, only vegetarian, mm-hmm. vegan, vegan, screaming and yelling. Ah, me, dad, we eat this.
Fuck those vegans. They're too this. Man, fruitarians come in out of nowhere. Only fruit. <laughs> Fuck the vegetables. I don't even know what all these things are. There's all these now. things. Like, so, but they're not realizing, well, maybe that might be better for you. Right. Well, with this dog, the positive reinforcement at this time is good. Um, this food at this time will be good for you, but not at this time. Or this food for this person or this strategy for this dog is not the best in this moment. Mm -hmm. So what if we use all the food? And like, we're just, a, we're just a species that goes to extremes. And we, the easy way in life is to say, uh, I think that. I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to look into it. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to waste time on it because I got to get to my next app and I got to get to my next crazy thing that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Instead of, let me really look into nutrition. Let me understand myself. Maybe I should get some tests and see how my hormone levels are. What am I sensitive to? What is the, you know? So those things are all super important. And side note, we're probably going to be hiring a canine nutritionist. Mm -hmm. So if your dog has, because. Details to follow. Another, another little uh, fun fact is vets, and you can tell me if I'm wrong on this. I'm pretty sure they only take one, like one class of, of nutrition in vet school. So and but yet they're you're they're telling you about diet yeah. and gut and mm -hmm. prescriptions. It's crazy. Same thing with the behavior. That's why I'm like, well, like, why don't they just stick to the physical stuff? This is happening and this and that, and ask about behavior. or come up with a school that's teaching more about the behavior and not how that would be here's ideal. the subject. What's the first medication we use? Then mm -hmm. go from there. Fuck well, that. that gets into a whole other thing. So but anyway, thanks guys. Really good one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, stay calm and confident. We'll see you next week on the next episode of the Ask the yes. Pack Leader show. See you episode guys. 22. Yes. Later. <laughs> Good Thanks, guys. Good to, you, can, you can add me. Yay. <laughs> Gets right off his chair. Kicking my lights. Thanks, buddy. Don't go too far. Why?